some uh, rumour he wasn't fit. We'll let's try see, and pick him up. Let's see if we can find number 22 or Bill Duckworth. Copping is certainly there, as Bob mentioned. I believe that Wood will be the player out. That's just a personal opinion. And you still think that uh, Duckworth will be on the side? There was. Uh, uh, that's. Uh, I don't. Know, that's not Duckworth. We're trying to pick up uh, what player that has uh, been left out of the uh, Essendon side. That's Duckworth now yeah, on camera. Yeah, it's so it's Billy Duckworth out of the side and in the uh, blue Adidas. Uh, jacket there and, and uh, Billy Duckworth unfortunately has been a great player for Essendon and they will miss him badly and at the back of the Essendon team doing a cruise around the ground we see Brian Wood out there so the uh, ex Richmond champion that's had a lot of grand final experience is in the lineup to play here today in the 1983 grand final that was Brian Wood on camera and so uh, interesting to see just how Wood does pull up and uh, these days Lou I understand I read by the uh, press that the players can actually test their uh, thighs on machines to find out whether or not the leg is good enough to take these threads and Peter that's a magnificent banner of Hawthorns isn't it? It's the but best I've ever seen uh, apart from the two Richmond banners uh, maybe it's the same artist that has done the <laughs> work really there. Right. And Kevin actually, Bartlett of course played his 400th game earlier in the year and we had a huge banner to celebrate that but now here come Hawthorne, led by captain Lee Matthews. And the banner breaks. That's a bit of bad luck because a lot of work gone into that banner. And Lee Matthews leading the side on the ground and a lot will be expected of uh, Lee Matthews. But I'm always a little bit doubtful about players that go into a grand final with a, a doubtful hamstring because in a final match you've got to exert yourself to the utmost and there could be a little bit of pressure applied and I just certainly hope for uh, Brian Wood's sake that that doesn't happen today because the Bombers need uh, him today well every player is needed because when you reach the grand final you need every bit of luck you possibly can get exactly right Lou and we have we have discussed the Essendon uh, interchange and such but uh, Hawthorne also picked five players we did see Ken Judge uh, stripping the rooms I cannot see uh, yes Michael Burns down there so it might be Michael Byrne and Ken Judge on the interchange. It will be interesting to see whether or not it was a blind, Lou. Well, coaches uh, do a lot of uh, funny things uh, in ordinary games, so I wouldn't put it past to do something outstanding in a grand final, Peter, really, would you? Well, if you can count them out there quickly, Lou, we'll know very soon. Well, I'll give it a go if I can. And Peter Knights, of course, playing his 250th game today, and what a magnificent player Knights has been for Australian rules football. Yes, of course, I remember, and you too, Bob, uh, his performance in the 78 grand final. I think he got KO'd early in the final quarter and then got up off the ground to... Went to the forward line. Yes, and he took a great mark in the forward pocket. There's only 20 uh, Hawthorne players out there, unless... Uh, um, my adding up is uh, incorrect. Uh, <laughs> well, that's happened before. <laughs> that's happened it? before. <laughs> Pete, it has been mentioned that we are going live to the United States and uh, the man, and in, New the, Zealand the man and, uh, in, the, in the United States, of course, is Ronald Dalbarassi. And he might be a little bit interested to know that in the under-19 grand final, Melbourne won by nine goals. <laughs> that should cheer him up, certainly. Let's go down to our reporter on the boundary line and introduce Stephen Phillips, who has the team changes for this afternoon's game. A very good afternoon, Peter, and uh, Hawthorne have made a couple of changes just in their lineup on the interchange bench, although I suppose Alan Jones would have liked to have put him straight into action, will be Bertie Dipier Domenico and Ken Judge. Byrne will line up in the opening lineup. Four foot spray, uh, four uh, Essen, I should say. Billy Duckworth is out of the side, couldn't get over that cork thigh, and Copping, Ezard, and Clayton will line up. Brian Wood assures me that he's okay, and there was some doubt about Terry Wallace. There were some rumours around that he's fully fit and roaring to go. Right, thank you, Stephen. The sides will now line up in the centre. Hawthorne have taken up a position on the edge of the centre square. And for viewers that aren't familiar with the Australian game, the square simply means that when the ball is bounced after a goal, neither side can have more than four players in it. If one player encroaches over the line before the ball is bounced, it's a kick to the opposition from the centre circle, and that is a great advantage. Peter, when they say that uh, there was a doubt about Terry Wallace playing, the only way Terry, was, Terry Wallace wouldn't play is if he had two broken legs, it's I well, reckon. There's been a doubt about Terry Wallace every match this year, and yet he's been the most prolific kick-getter in the uh, league, and, uh, of course... Terry Wallace, for our viewers that don't know much about him, there he is on screen now, wears number 16 and a, a great uh, player and, of course, uh, polled very well on the Brownlow medal this year, even though 
Uh, he didn't win it. A lot of people expected that uh, he possibly would have taken the uh, coveted uh, medal out. And as they talk about the uh, toughness of the Essendon side, uh, Terry Wallace is certainly one Hawthorne player that will not be getting out of the way. Well, there's been a tremendous amount of publicity through the media this week about these two sides, the toughest in the, uh, in the league, and everybody's expecting a bit of a clash here. And, of course, the clash we'll see today, I think it's a normal clash in the grand final, Bob, as we mentioned at the opening. Players are that tensed up, they've got to release the tension, and they do a lot of th wrong things. And I think you mentioned there's a lot of elementary mistakes made, too. Yes, with 110,000 people roaring as, that um as the umpire holds the ball up in the air, uh, then you have to release something. Possibly the best thing that can happen to you once he's bounced the ball is someone to knock you over because you know you're in a football game then, don't you? <laughs> well, it depends how hard he hits you. Uh, well, as long as he gives you a little bit of a tickle so that you know that it doesn't do any harm to you. But I think once you get your first kick, you feel as though it's an ordinary game again. Terry Danaher, the Essendon skipper at the moment, having a few words to his team, probably summarising the many words that uh, Kevin Sheedy would have had to them right throughout the week. And uh, I think the only players in the Essendon side to uh, play in... Uh, Premiership sides or maybe even grand final sides uh, would have been uh, Brian Wood. Wood from Richmond and Kink from Collingwood. And I think we must give a lot of credit to Kevin Sheedy and Cam too. And Cameron Clayton, of course. And we welcome at this stage viewers to ESPN, the cable station in the United States that is taking the network uh, coverage here this afternoon. We hope you're going to have a great evening watching uh, the match here today. It is, of course, Friday night over there in the United States. We've had many letters from viewers in the States asking for Cheerios. Unfortunately, we can't send over 100 or so calls. That means Ron Barassi would have missed my result of the thirds. Well, a uh, good win for Melbourne, Ron. So that will be certainly good news insofar as you're concerned. But to all our overseas viewers in New Zealand, Hong Kong, Japan, Italy, and, of course, the United Kingdom who are taking this great sporting spectacle live from Australia. We hope you're going to enjoy the game as the two teams now line up with the umpires and the Tri-Services mass bands for the playing of the National Anthem, which will be sung by Glenn Shorrock. And of course, uh, the crowd here today is around about the 110 to 115,000, a capacity house. And unless you've been to a grand final, you've never been to a football match in your life, have you, uh, Bob and Peter? That's for sure, Lou. The toss about to happen now. And both sides coming in to check that the umpire Kevin Smith doesn't cheat. I think this is a new, in new innovation that the uh, coaches have brought in. The players must stay together. And of course, this is the a a day that uh, it looks as though Matthews might have won the toss, Bob. It's pretty hard to tell the way. I think he's picked it. I think Hawthorne <laughs> will be kicking to the, uh, uh, the goal to the left of your screen. This is the great part about the MCG, though. You can, can score against the wind. And for our American viewers, the stadium here was, of course, the venue for the 1956 Olympic Games. It was the main stadium and is situated just out of central Melbourne.
God save the Queen played as the Governor of the State of Victoria is here at the match and also the Governor General of Australia, Sir Ninian Stephen, also in attendance. As the balloons go up, that clears the preliminaries and the grand final for 1983 will be getting underway in just a few moments' time. The tri services mass bands moving off the field. Officials are striking the steps and stage used for the singing and we must congratulate Glenn Shorrock Lou I thought that was a tremendous rendition of Advance Australia Fair and suitably decked out in the attire of the Australia 2 syndicate and guys over there in Newport everybody is behind you go to it and bring the America's Cup back to Australia well that goes for everybody in Australia and uh, particularly here at the MCG uh, Bob I was just thinking before when the players were standing there for the two national anthems that would be the longest five minutes or three minutes in their football career, I'd reckon, because all those boys want to do at the moment is get the umpires to bounce the ball and get into the game. Yes, to them, Lou, it probably seemed like about ten minutes. That's right. And, uh, at the present moment, the adrenaline would really be flowing through those players' veins. And uh, I, you know, well, I personally, and uh, I don't mind going, you know, making the tip beforehand as much as Essendon have been running on well. And uh, it will be a, it's an even money bet, but I always yes. like the side that's had the, the week's break. You've had 22 games, the finals, night games, and uh, you know when we had the Sterling Cup and everything else. So uh, I believe the week's break would have done Hawthorne the world of good. Well, I'm going for Hawthorne too, but that's not in uh, Hawthorne's favour. That could uh, certainly help the Bombers to win this match. And of course, to our viewers in America, if you don't know the club names or the uh, the names that we give these sides the red and black team is called the bombers in the white shorts in the white shorts and of course the boys in the brown and uh, gold out there in the in the brown shorts are called the hawks that's hawthorne so they're both tough sides and it should be a pretty uh, tough sort of a match too uh, bub so i just looked down at the hawthorne there and the it looked as though for a moment that peter knights was going to come off on the interchange bench as we see brian wood who missed the uh, preliminary final uh, with injury and uh, could have been a little bit suspect but I, I'm sure that Essendon would not take a risk. Also uh, again to viewers overseas and interstate who might not be familiar with the Melbourne cricket ground surface it is natural turf not astro turf you would not find it possible to play a game of Australian football on astro turf because of the injury risk of course it's a very hard surface they use it here for hockey um, we did have some rain here in Melbourne this morning I think it dampened things down rather than anything else, Bob, because looking at the arena from our vantage point here, it does look in fantastic condition, doesn't it? Yes, I, I think we've had, uh, you know, enough time now without rain that the uh, ground will start off in uh, perfect position. And the Essendon interchange, Stephen Coffing on, on the right as you look at it, and Cameron Clayton also coming off. Uh, so Coffing and Clayton on the interchange, Ezard then would go into the side. It will, of course, be his first grand final. He's only played a handful of games for Essendon. We look at the Hawthorne interchange players, Ken Judge and Bertie D. Peter Domenico. I would have started with Bertie on the ground because he'd be one player that would certainly be fired up. Anyway, Alan Jeans is the coach. He sees it differently. And, of course, Kevin Sheedy uh, starting with Cameron Clayton on the bench as well. And Clayton and D. Peter Domenico would probably be the two fieriest players in the lineup. Anyway, that's my opinion. Others may disagree. I'm not the coach they are. Hawthorne kicking to the left of the screen, and that is the end favoured by the breeze, but... Knights out there on the boundary and uh, everything in readiness for the start of the 1983 uh, Grand Final. And it should be a, a crackerjack game, uh, Peter. Yes, we're looking forward to a great contest here. 110,000 people. War as umpire Neville Nash comes in to bounce the ball for the start of the 1983 Grand Final from Melbourne Cricket Ground between Hawthorne and Essendon. Clayton gets the first tap out. Let's see if there are those mistakes we were looking for. Umpire Kevin Smith has decided on a ball up. And looking at the ground through the glasses, it does look in very, very good condition. Clayton and Madden, knocked down by Madden this time. Goes to Glenn Hawker, the first kick of the game, going the bomber's way up towards their half-forward line. A chance for them to swing into attack here, and the skipper brings them into attack. Danaher's kick up towards full forward. Knocked away by Ayres, he's playing on kick at the moment. Too long for Tuck, backing up well as Rodney Ede. Gets through one Essendon player, has to go for the hurried handball. Very close to the boundary line, Neagle got one for his corner, seen by the umpire, and it will be a free kick to the Essendon centre man at right half forward flank. A long way from goal, Neagle centres the ball, looking for kink. 
two on one out there. The fist away by the Hawthorne defenders. Williams tackled well. A play on call again. Down it comes to Kennedy. Eat again. Kick number two. Knights and Matthews clash the two veterans and spoil each other. Knights again get shirt fronted. Too high, says the umpire, but the free kick down goes Kevin Smith. Now he's giving the kick to Knights or Carey. He got a nasty bump that time, Carey. I think it was from Knights too, Bob, wasn't it? Well, Knights came in attacking the ball and uh, Carey having to be in the way as Weston puts it forward. Looking for Merritt. McCarthy's there. Down to Ayers. Ayers on to Kennedy. Fumble. In trouble. Long handball to get them out of it. It comes to Chris Mew. Up to centre wing. Brereton was there. Doesn't get a favourable bounce. Now the chance. Tries to get it back to Loveridge. Wallace. First kick. Folds. In the back of his opponent, Gary Bacanara, who's got the free kick and in trouble. Bacanara limping badly. Oh, down he goes. He's in all sorts of trouble, Bacanara. What a blow for Hawthorne. And the mark taken by Peter Schwab. He'll be coming off. Now it goes to full forward. Burn three opponents and subsequently can't do too much with it. Ede has the chance. And it's out of bounds in the Hawthorne forward block. Out of bounds about uh, 30 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. That's a blow to, to uh, Bacanara. It looks as though he's coming off the ground. One of their star forwards and uh, a player they're relying on today. What a blow to Hawthorne. The ball knocked out by Byrne, picked up by Carey. Chance now for uh, Bradbury to get a short kick back towards centre-half back. There's Neagle spinning out the back that he's grabbed by Wallace. And in goes Abandahar. Bahaja gets it out to Neagle, out to Bradbury again. Airs upsets him. And it's on for Young and Old. We see O'Halloran bust clear. Over to Peter Knights. A long shot at goal, but he's off target. And the ball is out of bounds. So it'll be a throw-in from that forward bucket. Oh, what a blow to Hawthorne. Bacanara still on the ground, but in plenty of pain out there. Doctor looking at him now. What? Judge is ready to come on. The interchange player. Ball pushed out by Bacanara as he goes over the line, so it's out of bounds again. Only about uh, 10 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. One interesting move by Lou. McCarthy is at centre-half back. Mew at full-back on Danaher. There's Walsh of Eston trying to clear. Byrne gets a short kick in there. And going out to meet it now is uh, Foles and takes a good mark at full-back. Short pass out wide. And the mark taken there by Weston. A little short of back pocket. Into this quarter by three minutes, or uh, just on four minutes, I should say. And the ball back out there and a great mark to air. At the moment, we've got no uh, score on the board and Bacanara coming off the ground. And a good mark there to tuck. Number 17, watch him today. Bacanara in a lot of pain. That's bad luck uh, for Hawthorne. And it's luck, isn't it? Well, it also bad. bad luck for poor old Bacanara as the ball is... Oh, long kick by Tuck. It's not a bad one, but it veered off and it's through for one point. So that's the first score of the match coming at the four and a half minute mark. Hawthorne, one point to... Uh, Essendon yet to score. Yeah, no, really in trouble there. Shane Hurd coming in from fullback. Folds. Around the halfback flank. In towards centre field. Looking for Weston. And he marks. Madden. Up the half forward. Ezard has it knocked away from him. O'Halloran in trouble. Back it comes to Ayers. McCarthy. Kennedy. Tuck. Cuts clear. Merritt won't catch him. Good shepherd. To half forward. Too long for Matthews. Plenty of opponents down there. Oh, well done from Walsh. Superb play. Out to Watson. Schwab. Oh, beautifully done from Schwab. The chance for Wood on the boundary line. Caught. Out. Well, you notice the umpires are being a little bit leaning at the moment, uh, Bob. I think they're allowing for grand final moves. Bacanara still in plenty of trouble down there on the uh, on the bench. Well, can they win it for Gary Bacanara? I don't think he'll be taking any further part in the game. Bernard Walsh after Matthews missed the mark. Walsh wins out. There's a free kick going someone's way. Is there no play on? Is the call from the umpire? Folds. Back to centre field. Vanderhaar and O'Halloran. Vanderhaar, great mark. Well, it's a great opening. Not for Hawthorne. Losing Bacanara. Kicked away. Off the ground. Knocked down by Ayres. Chance for Kennedy. Back to Ayres. A free kick going Hawthorne's way. And it will be taken by John Kennedy at right half-back flank. 
Kennedy uh, can't quite make up his mind. Finally boots the ball long back there to Knights in the front place. He's got the mark, Peter Knights. That's a good mark. They're expecting a lot from him today. Over it goes to Brereton. There's a chance for Matthews now. Coming in to meet it is Rodney Eads, showing a lot of pace. There's a pass. It's all right. And a goal to Bloodreach. And Hawthorne gets the first goal on the board at the six and a half minute mark. Let's go down to Stephen Phillips. We see the score now. One goal, one, seven points to the yes and get the score. Stephen Phillips, our man on the boundary line. Thanks, Lou. Very bad news for Hawthorne. Gary Buccanara won't take any further part. He's dislocated his left knee in extreme agony. And as you saw, he's off on the stretcher and back into the rooms. And so that's certainly bad luck for Hawthorne. But that was a great goal, nonetheless, created by the speed of Rodney E. Hawthorne, one goal, one, seven points to Western yet to score. Payton against uh, Madden. Payton got the knockout. Down it goes to Hawker. It's a wild kick out towards that wing position. Going out to meet it now is Swabby. Slips. Tuck comes in to help him. Tuck goes for hand pass. Over to Robertson. Back it goes to Little Lovage who kicked the last goal. Out there at half forward. It's up there towards the full forward position. At the back is Judge. Couldn't hold the mark. Carey overruns the ball. He's in trouble. Byrne can't get out. There's Matthews trying to thread his way through the pack. Judge again. Plenty of fumbling going on. An umpire Nash will ball it up. What on the edge of the kickoff mark? Well, umpire Nash. Plenty of pressure out there at the moment, Bobby. That's what the grand final's about, Lou. Yes, there's plenty of business players down there too. Burn Friday was burned one over the shoulder. Not successful. Watch him now. The Bombers will get away with this. Bradbury. Bahaja. Looking for a 15-metre penalty, but none there. Well, beautiful kick. Looking for Kink. Knocked away from him. Actually, too long for him. Kennedy doing a good job down there at the moment, too. John Kennedy across the half-back line. Looks for Tuck. Doesn't bounce kindly for him. Tuck equal to the occasion. Oh, grab when not in possession. He'll take the free kick. And, of course, Michael Tuck didn't play against Essendon when the Bombers kicked 10 goals in that first quarter at Windy Hill. Tuck at right centre wing. Knocked away by the Essendon defence. Wallace is there. Into full forward. Judge at the back. And Mark! Oh. One hander! Oh, what a mark! As he judged that for perfection, but even with the judgment, he still had to actually hold as we watched the replay. One hand. He didn't even juggle it. <laughs> well, Judge, of course, has the job of taking Bacanara's place. They're both West Australians. He'll be very keen to do well for his mate. Pretty acute angle. Hit the post. So things not going right for Hawthorne at the moment. However, the good sign is that some of their stars are performing well. Eight points, the lead enjoyed by Hawthorne. Bombers appear to be a little bit nervous at the moment. That's understandable. And the umpires found a free kick. It'll go to their ruckman, Simon Madden, out there at half back. One goal, two eight points to the Bombers yet to score, Hawthorne. Now that's young Williams taking them. Oh, it's going back the kick to uh, 15 metre penalty. To Madden with a 15 metre penalty. Ball driven over towards centre half four. Well, oh, there's Ayers in the front position. And he'll get the free kick. Ayers goes for a hand pass now. Out it goes. It's, uh, it's Swab getting the ball over. Finally punched on. Good play by the part of Rodney. E. Judge again in the front fuzzy. Bowles is there and he carts it over the line and out of bounds. So it's out of bounds. Uh, about uh, 70 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. And they've been into attack for most of this quarter. And it's been going just on uh, 10 minutes. Ball back into play again. Little Bahaja trying to spin it up the pack. A wrestling match going on there. And the umpire will ball it up still on Hawthorne's half forward line up towards the centre wing position. And Bob, this game is uh, a little bit tame at the moment, not as what we expected. Well, it never is, is it, Lou? When you really expect a, you know, knock them down type thing, it just doesn't all eventuate that way. We see a free kick going here against Pate. It'll go to Simon Madden out there towards the centre wing position. The Bombers yet to score into this first quarter of the 1983 grand final by ten and a half minutes across the centre half forward. Oh, nearly a mark there to Merritt. Couldn't grab it, he goes after it again. Fine play as he gets it out to uh, Hawker. Free kick to Watson. It'll be a free kick to Watson. The ball short. There's a go for Rene Kink, the incredible Hulk. And the incredible Hulk, the ex-Collingwood star. There's the distance. Of, say it's about 35 to 40 metres out on about a 45 degree angle. And, of course, he's got a chance to put their fourth score on the board. And he's hoping for a goal. It's coming around nicely. It's a beautiful goal.
new Series 2 Statesman DeVille. There's nothing quite like a V8. Madden knocks it clear. That's two hit outs apiece. Chance for Neagle. Hits it straight to Swap. Wallace caught. But it will be a ball up. Left half forward for Essendon. Merritt palms it out. The bombers swing into attack. O'Halloran's there. Gathers it on the run in front of Van der Haar. Over to Wallace. From right half back flank. No mark played there. And chance for Essendon's Neagle. Bahaja. Wobbles it to half forward. Airs at the back. Can't take it. Ezard should get there first. Gets the bounce and shirt fronted. There's an elbow there. In fact, there are a couple of them. Picked up by Williams. Now Halloran, strong. Robertson. Knights. Good mark and plays on to Wallace. Plenty of Essendon players there. They can't stop the run. Judge in front of Folds. Making the most of his opportunities. Goes long. Torpedo. Walsh at the back. Tuck. Fumbles. Matthews, first touch in the back. No. Hawthorne fans not happy with that. Neither was we, and understandably so. Umpire said he put his head down only after he was pushed. Ball up to take place, 15 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. Burn in ruck against Madden, the two tallest players on the ground. It's won by Madden, taken by Tuck. Looks for a free kick, none there. They're not going to give them in front of goal, are they? It's a pretty famous uh, decision to make there because I thought Tuck was hell when he didn't have the ball. Uh, I didn't think there was any doubt about it. No. A ball up about 20 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. Knocked out by Madden. There's a go for Knights. Picks it up beautifully. He's collared. Down he goes. You get a free kick for push in the back. Well, I didn't think that one was there. Well, OK, you miss one, you give another. And then we see Hurd and uh, Matthews having a bit of a go. Let's see it again. Oh, he's pushed him, he's grabbed him, actually. There's no doubt with a free kick. Well, I think it was uh, for holding the man, Pete. We wait now for Peter Knight. It's only about uh, 20 metres out on about a, well, a pretty acute angle, but he could easily kick this one for a right footer. Oh, what a shocking kick. He's nearly put it out of bounds. Burn flies high, but it's forced through for one point. That was a bad miss by Peter Knights. So at the 14-minute mark, it's one goal, three nine points. Hawthorne to Western, one goal, six points. As we wait now for the ball to come back into play. It's a go for Reed. Overruns that one, and it's out of bounds. Was it touched? I don't know if he touched it. The umpire said yes, he did. It's a bit of bad luck, because uh, had uh, the Hawthorne player not touched that one, it would have been a free kick uh, to them. We see Peyton and Madden having a great wrestle there. Knocked out to Neagle. He's grabbed. Intercepted by Peyton. He comes out of the back. Good play by the big fellow as he drives it down there towards the forward pocket. And once again, it's out of bounds. Out of bounds about 10 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. And at the moment, they're nine points to Hawthorne, to Eston, six points. It'll be Madden against Byrne. Madden got the tap down to Brereton. A snap well covered by Watson. Spinning out of the pack is Matthews. There's strength for you. And look at the champ go as he fires at the goals. He won't make the distance. And a good mark there in defence by Walsh. A quick hand pass over the foul. But the umpire said he's got to go over his mark. A bit of bad luck there because they had a break, but... I don't understand. I I can't that, either. Is, that is just penalising Essendon there. Uh, he took the mark. I see no reason he didn't go ever attempt to go back and take his kick. He played on straight away, so why should the player have to come up and kick this way? 15 minutes gone. Nine points plays eight in favour of Hawthorne. Pushed out by Brera and again. Back there towards Carey. He's grabbed by Matthews. It goes back to Bradbury. The ball a short kick back there now. Coming into middle is Rene Kink. He overruns the ball. Backing up well as Williams. He's in a bit of trouble. He's grabbed. Here's a go now for Kennedy. Have a shot at goal. And he's put it through for goal. The advanced Quintrex picture tube inside means a better picture out front. You'll only see it on national. Pro quality shows through, huh? The more I see you. Want to see more? More new TV sets. More going for them. That's national. National sure puts more into television. The same pro quality that made their video systems famous. Come national. Hawthorne lead by nine points in the first quarter. 
Payton and Madden. Madden bumps it away. 25 metres downfield. Ayers, lovely smother. The opportunity for Wallace and Neagle. Schwab, oh, runs straight into Brian Wood. Ezard. Sock it out. Vanderhaar will get there. Free kick to Hawthorne. For what? I know not. Bob, did you see that one? No, I didn't, Pete. Uh, uh, McCarthy taking it. Out to Wood and Schwab. Use and experience. Youth wins out. Bad handball. Wallace. <laughs> chasing and caught him out of bounds on the fall great chasing by Robertson and that is the stuff that coaches love that's exactly right Pete is a great example to you know, football is everywhere young and old of what you do watch Knights at the back can't take it Weston's there Brereton around Bradbury on the Knights the bounce you have to kick better than he did before to score this is a better kick but off target again and through for one behind. So Knight spraying them, one behind from two deliberate shots at goal. Hawthorne lead by ten points. Well, there's no doubt that Knights is looking pretty dangerous out there, Bob. Yes, you can let a player like Knights, uh, you know, loose for just a moment. But then when you're a player like Weston, you must be saying to yourself, well, I can't hold him all day. Ball back into play again. Out towards the half-back flank. And there's Peyton coming in, dropped the sitter that time, goes after it. Oh, there's a free kick to Williams, grabbed too high. And he holds the box on between he and Judge, a 15-metre penalty. And at the moment, it's uh, two goals for 16 Hawthorne, a Western one goal, six points. Ball punched away again, picked up by Wallace, a hurried kick back there, grabbed by Hurd, a long hand pass. And there's a go for Watson, another one coming over the fouls. And this will send the Bombers deep into attack, a beautiful pass, but Ezard dropped it. And what beautiful play on the part of uh, Ayers that time. Streaks away from Ezard. Boots the ball out wide, looking there for Swab, but it's too long. Oh, he grabs the Bradbury, but finally a hand pass back to Fowles. Doesn't know where to go. They're a bit mixed up, Esmond, at the moment. Bradbury up the wood on his own. He's going to go down. Oh, by golly, are they tackling hard? And by a core plan after he paid the free kick, and there's a mark out there at half forward after Swab. Short pass coming up. It's a dangerous one to Matthews. Try to pick it up on the first half. He got the... Uh, Bradbury right behind the ear that time and the umpire spotted it and a free kick to the Esther and a half back flanker out there at half back. Which is what he knows around, Lee. I think he does that every now and again, Lee for Lee. Bradbury uh, out there at half back. Boots the ball back towards centre field. Uh, Renee Kink claiming the mark and the umpire playing that one. Renee Kink's already kicked one goal, their only goal. Two, two marks to Kink. Two marks to Kink as he boots the ball long over the centre half forward position. Watson's been down and uh, Wood running from behind might square it up. There's a chance now as the ball is down there on their forward line of the umpires found a free kick. There it is behind play. And Watson still in the hands of the trainers and a bit of a scrimmage uh, going over here now at the uh, half forward for Essendon. Didn't see what started that. Uh, well, I'll tell you what happened. It started up slow, but it could live up there. Yes, that's right. It certainly could. Well, the reason Wood ran 100 yards to Colin Robertson is that uh, Timmy Watson's in the hands of the trainers. Uh, I'll say no more. Need I say any more? No. Uh, well, OK, we're at the 20-minute uh, mark of this first quarter. And Hawthorne have been into attack for most of the quarter. They're kicking with the breeze. Two goals, four, 16 to Western, one goal, six points. As the ball comes out towards that... Uh, well, the umpire's bringing it back, and McCarthy will have another kick. I made a couple of uh, changes. Mew to full back. Mew to full back. Looks as though Timmy Watson's OK. And, of course, McCarthy to set a half back. Take more than that, down Timmy Watson, I think. Short pass. And Kennedy, once again, no doubt Hawthorne's best player in the first quarter. But he's getting the blame for it, I think, uh, Kennedy. They look alike, don't they? And a good mark taken out there by Tuck. Late on the scene was the flying Dutchman, Vanderhaar. And the free kick and the mark will go to uh, Michael Tuck out there on the edge of the square. And yet no 15 metres. How yes. can you work umpires out? Tuck looking for one. Well, then again, he didn't get a boat in the ground, though. So I suppose it's not surprising. Knock on by Byrne. Matthews looking for a free. None there. Beautifully taken by Williams. Great find, this fellow. Up the centre wing. Oh, what a mark! That's Merritt. Who plays on, up to half forward, Danaher and Mew. Yes, what a mark again! Oh, oh that's a bit that's hard. That is ridiculous. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely ridiculous. A 
Fire Smith might almost kick it for him. What more can he do except stand on the mark? He's goal. Put up. Westman go forward again. Ezard. Up to Mew. Out of bounds. Boundary throw in right forward pocket for Essendon. Who trailed by four points at the moment. Only a couple of incidents in the first quarter to live in the crowd. The one we spoke of, a couple of interesting decisions. It comes to Gary Ayres. Brereton slips over at the crucial moment. The chances for Hurd and also Carey. The latter wins it. Who gets a, a hip and shoulder after he's kicked it. Schwab to Ayres again. Back to centre wing. Underneath it is Bradbury. Brereton's there likewise and spoiled him. Has to recover quickly. On to Tuck. Tuck from the circle to half forward. Carey couldn't get going. Oh, here's a chance to judge a golden opportunity. Pings it goal. He might get another kick, will he? If it's not through, perhaps. Or is it a free kick? A free kick? Who to? I'm not sure. What was that for? <laughs> you better ask umpire Smith. Well, what a... What a few uh, confusing decisions here at the moment, and uh, certainly... Well, let's look at it again. It's certainly not between those two. No, I think it may have been Byrne that did the damage. But Byrne was... Byrne was in front of, uh, of Rock, so it couldn't have been Byrne. Mm. Well, it's going back now to Byrne. It's Byrne's getting to Byrne. Now, that is penalising the side. Well, there we see now. Byrne is only about uh, 15 metres out from goal, but if he misses this one, umpire Smith won't be too happy. It was against Walsh, and Judge had already kicked the goal before that. There's the kick. So it's the same result, a goal to Hawthorne. And Hawthorne now move on to three goals, four, 22 to Eston, two goals, 12 points. And we're at the 24-minute mark of this, the first quarter of the 1983 grand final. Well, two very controversial decisions in front of goal. Bob Skilton, first of all, the 15-metre penalty against Chris Mew, and then that decision there. Yes, sir. Uh... You know, he did hang on a little bit, but it's only penalising the side. Why bring it back when the side has kicked a goal? Burn in the ruck for Hawthorne, 24 and a half minutes played. Well, he's there to assist uh, Payton. He's doing a good job at the moment. Burn's got a chance. Oh, great knockout by, uh, by Madden, but picked up beautifully by Robertson. He and Kennedy and theirs are doing well down there. Knight's got a chance. Kick down field. Down a free kick, a kick down field. Knight's. Yes, Mervyn Adler was squaring up. From about 60 metres out, and a chance to put Hawthorne deep into attack. Well, we've had one lively instant when uh, apparently Robertson collected Watson. There's the kick now, a long one. It's a beautiful kick up there towards the goal. Way we have and Knights has had three shots for goal so far in this quarter. Two points. And he's kicked two points. One out of bounds and two points. So we wait now for the back of the play. Three goals, five. Hawthorne plays Essendon, two goals. 12 points as Carey hesitates there for the kickoff because the umpire had to finish waving the flags. Ball back into play again. Madden and Byrne go for this one. Punched out by Byrne. Tuck going after. Tries to tap it over the shoulder but couldn't uh, succeed that time. A scrimmage developing. Out it comes to Eve but the umpire will ball it up. Out there on Hawthorne's half forward line about uh, 55 metres out from the goal. Into the time on period of this first quarter by about 30 seconds. Bounce down. One by Byrne. Neagle. Almost caught by Green. Over to Bradbury. Haven't seen much of Green in this quarter so far. It's out to uh, centre field. Wallace. Oh, not Wallace, but Schwab got his head. Kennedy. In plenty of bother. To Knights. Over the top. McCarthy. Bradbury. Oh, stolen by uh, Judge. But no backing up. Weston. A uh, herd. Oh, Van der Hart with a mile in the air. Robertson. On to O'Halloran. Eid in trouble. Back to O'Halloran. On to Byrne. Byrne at centre wing. Goes for a run. Knights doing well at half forward. Up to full forward. Payton is there. Likewise, Matthews. Plenty of Essendon players for the spoil. Out to Brereton. Wallace. Snapshot is off target. Free, Free kick, kick to Wallace. Against Carey. Not him in the face that time, Peter. 
I think it stunned him a bit too. He doesn't look too good. Well, they wouldn't want to lose him. They've already lost Bacanara, one of their star players. Oh, he's, he's out to it, Wallace. He's out. I think he got him right on the chin. I'd say he's very close to having a, a broken nose or jaw. He doesn't look too good at all. And then doctors and trainers are running from everywhere. Alan Jeans will be very worried now. He's lost two skilled players in the opening quarter. I want to say two if Wallace has to leave the ground, that will be the total. Well, knowing the makeup of Wallace, it'll take a lot to get him off the ground, Bob. Yes, but at the moment it'll take him a while to get over that too. Lee Matthews taking the kick in the meantime. And kicks it through for a goal. So Matthews putting through his first goal from a free kick which was originally awarded to Wallace. Wallace back into the thing, play two. Well, I don't suppose you could have given him a better guy to kick to the uh, goal that time. You're, not, you're not suggesting, Lou, that Terry was making sure that Lou Matthews got the kick out. No, I'm not suggesting for one moment, but it certainly looked that way, didn't it? Well, I don't know whether any numbers were taken there or in the other incident. Um, but we might say to viewers around the world that Terry Wallace is not the, not the kick that Lee Matthews is. And that's for sure. 28 minutes got in the first quarter. Certainly incident packed in the last few minutes. Bahadur and Tuck tangled. It comes to McCarthy. Playing a role in defence today. Usually plays in the forward line. Underneath it is uh, Loveridge, and that's a good mark. He plays on from foul. Boot the ball quickly. Up the full forward. Peyton and Walsh. Peyton. The knock on. Not successful. Trying to find Judge. And the ball comes out of defence. Hawker is there. Robertson. Not the most popular player on the field at the moment. A badly directed kick and the mark taken by Bradbury in the goal square. Good mark by Bradbury. 28 and a half minutes gone of the first quarter. A hand pass coming out there to Timmy Watson. He was stunned in this quarter too, but he looks okay now. Has a bit of a trot around that uh, half-back line. A hand pass coming over to Neagle. Neagle at centre field goes for a short pass. Looking for Van de Haan. He's got the mark at centre half forward. Needing a goal before quarter time, Estes. We see Van der Hart drive it up there looking for Danaher. Oh, there's a chance now for Little Ezra to snap a goal. He's right. He's got it. So they bounce back to Bono. 29 minutes gone. And the score, four goals, five, 29, Hawthorne. To Essendon, three straight shots for goal, 18 points. And that's nine shots to three, but Essendon certainly making the most of their three. And uh, Ezard roving to it, uh, you know, with great... Uh, instinct there he knew exactly where it was coming off the hands of the pack and the little Ezard has been a great find for the Essendon side right through the year 29 and a half minutes gone in the first quarter back to the center again it'll be burn against Madden Madden got it out but not a good one Wallace there gets a kick smothered out it goes to Eve he picks it up on the first bounce goes for a pass then it's a bad one Bradbury fumble that one we see a hand pass coming out now from burn to Brereton Plenty of uh, play for the umpires found a free kick. It'll go to Brereton. He was grabbed when he didn't have the ball. He's in a bit of a hurry, this guy. He should go back and have the long kick. And that's what he's doing now. Into the goal square. Knights flies high. Matthews has got a chance to get this one, but it'll beat him. And the ball is out of bounds. So it's out of bounds in the forward pocket position for Hawthorne. About uh, five to ten metres around from their goal. Pretty close to siren time to end this first quarter. Brown with a snap at goal, but he's up target. And it's through for another point. So at the 30 and a half minute mark of the first quarter, we see the score now. Four goals, six, 30 points. Uh, to Eston, three goals, 18 points. With Alan Jeans, the coach, down there on the ground. He's getting ready to go and talk to his players at quarter time. Which is not, not too far away. Van der Haar, good mark over David O'Halloran. Van der Haar is at right half uh, back flank at the moment. Mew and Danaher. McCarthy is there. It was there. Back it comes to Ezard, who was grabbed, didn't seem to have the ball. Picked up by Byrne. Back to Wallace, who's recovered from that very heavy knock, but kicks it straight to his opponent, Neagle, who gets it onto Williams. Straight to Gary Ayres. Long kick by Ayres. Straight downfield. Brereton, a knock on, and gets steamrolled for his trouble. On a judge. Judge into full forward, Matthews is there! <laughs> Luther Lee has not had too many kicks in this first quarter. He kicked the goal with one of his previous four, and that was the free kick that was originally intended for Terry Wallace. Matthews, 30 metres out. And a goal. And so a very valuable one for Hawthorne in the rather lengthy first quarter. Two goals to Matthews. 
And it's 5 6 36 Hawthorne Essendon, three goals, 18 points. Kevin Sheedy alongside Cameron Clayton and Kevin Egan, the Essendon team manager. And we watch on the replay as uh, Ken Judge puts the ball forward. Matthews getting away from Stephen Carey and taking an easy mark. Well, Judge has done well, Bob, since he came on to replace Bacanara. Yes, and so far, um, we mentioned earlier the surprising move of McCarthy at centre-half back. But that certainly has come off because it's forced to Essendon to bring Danaher out to centre-half back and put Merritt to full forward. 32 minutes have gone in the first quarter. Hawthorne still leading after that goal by Matthews. Kink, handball to Van der Haar. Green is there for Hawthorne, goes over. Was he pushed or did he have the ball? The umpire says play on. O'Halloran tries to do just that. Wallace to Loveridge. Loveridge down towards centre wing. Oh, snared beautifully by Brereton. And Brereton drives it up there towards Lee Matthews. He's going after the game with Carey. And it's finally forced out of bounds by Carey. Just on the 33-minute mark and the siren due to go to end this first quarter for the 1983 Grand Final. And right now for the umpire to throw the ball back into play. 11 shots to three, Lou. This is the scoring end. Hawthorne are kicking two at the moment. The ball hits the deck. Chance for little Loveridge. He goes down. There's the side to end the first quarter. And uh, we see the prime, uh, quarter time scores in the 1983 Grand Final. Hawthorne, five goals. 6.36 points to Eston, three goals, 18 points. Coming soon, the story of a town, a river, the riverboat men, and a young girl who conquers them all in Nancy Cato's classic, All the Rivers Run. Philadelphia Gordon lost everything in the infamous bank crash, so she buys herself the pride of the river, she ventures hundreds of miles up the River Murray into the Queensland outback. We have the stomach to use it. Yes, and still brings the cargo through. She asks for no quarters in the tough male-only world of the river traders. You see, now you're up his hand. And wins for herself the greatest prize of all. Meant to be married to this man. Sigrid Thornton and John Waters star in All the Rivers Run. Be with Seven for the world television premiere. Brought to you by Kraft and AGC. What is it about Midas Muffler Shops? When my cop is off the road, I'm losing money, right? So one time I get Midas to fit a new muffler because they do it good while I wait. With a three-year guarantee that covers me, even if I accidentally damage it myself. Nice for me, eh? <laughs> Crazy for Midas, no? The Midas three-year muffler guarantee is the only one that covers you if you accidentally damage it yourself. When your muffler snuffs it, take it to Midas. IBM put a lot of what it knows about computers into the IBM personal computer. Not to make it complicated, but to make it simple. So it's easy to understand and easy to use. IBM made its personal computer to help a person be more productive, to help a person be more creative. And those are good reasons for a person to feel good. The IBM personal computer, another small computer from IBM. As Australia's leading lights, these seven building societies have formed a bright new star, the National Permanent Network, with $4 billion in assets. A network with extra benefits for every Hotham investor. And Hotham remains a star in its own right, the brightest in Victoria. The National Permanent Network, Australia's new $4 billion superstar. Take two gorgeous movie stars, add a huge dollop of Morley, stir in superb restaurants, and settle back to enjoy Who is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe? A delicious comedy, your Wednesday movie, 8.30, brought to you by Wilshire. Welcome back to the Melbourne Cricket Ground and the grand final scoreboard showing Hawthorne leading by 18 points at quarter time as we go to Stephen Phillips down at the boundary. Thank you, Peter. An announcement came across the public address system looking for the Hawthorne orthopaedic specialist for Gary Bacanara. He snapped a tendon in his left knee and he's just about to go off the hospital. Dreadful news for Gary Bacanara and very bad news for the Hawks. Terry Wallace, well, the Hawks bench just smiled and said they were glad he stayed down for that extra minute. Right, well, let's go now to the United States and Kerry O'Brien is... Uh uh, has some news for us on how Australia 2 is crew, Australia 2's crew is trying to watch the America's Cup. 
Peter, as you've said, the grand final is being broadcast across America tonight, but here in Newport, the crew of Australia 2 are under a tight curfew. Officially, they went to bed three hours ago, but I'd be surprised if a few of the boys haven't been watching on the quiet. Don't be misled by this apparent late-night calm. The tension in this town is unbelievable, and whatever pressure is being felt right now in the MCG dressing rooms, you could multiply that many times over to get some idea of what they'll be feeling as Australia 2 leaves the docks here in a few hours' time. It's fantastic to contemplate the timing, Peter. Two of the most magnificent spectacles in sport on opposite sides of the world, just a few hours apart, each unique in its own way. It's heartening to see what seems to be a genuine groundswell of support for the Aussies here from Americans, although the New York Yacht Club doesn't share that sentiment. I'll cross back to you now, but we'll be back on air live at 2 a.m. your time from Newport for a full live coverage of what has become the yacht race of the century. Thanks, Peter. All right, thank you, Kerry. Will players taking up their positions now for the resumption of play? Let's get some comments in the first quarter from Bob Skilton. Yes, well, uh, 11 shots to three. All honours in that first quarter would go to Hawthorne, but even though I've often said on the MCG that you can score at both ends of the ground, regardless of the wind, the wind certainly is favouring the end to which Hawthorne kicked in that quarter. But uh, they did have to play the better football. They looked the more dangerous and were probably a little bit unfortunate that they didn't put more goals on the board. For Essendon, they haven't had any real stars except that Simon Madden has dominated the actual ruck work. And around the, in defence, Peter Bradbury has done well. And up forward, uh, Darren Williams. Uh, otherwise, it's been a fairly even performance uh, by Essendon. But for the Hawks, we've had Rodney Eade playing well on the wing. We've had good players also in Gary Ayres in the back pocket. Matthews with two goals. O'Halloran. So we start the second quarter now of the 83 grand final. Hawthorne leading, but only by 18 points. Uh, a centre bounce infringement. It will go to Hawthorne, and it will be taken by Ian Payton. A lack of concentration by players. It's, That's know, unforgivable, any, Bob, isn't it? Isn't any excuse for that? No, none whatsoever. Payton takes the kick, or two Hawthorne players nearly spoiled each other. Mark taken eventually by Brereton, but Judge didn't see him, and vice versa, I'm sure. Brereton's starting to look a little bit dangerous towards the end of that uh, first quarter, I felt, Pete. Yes, Bob, he's picked up a bit of confidence, which he's lacked for the last uh, five or six weeks. Lead being made by Loveridge. He's had eight possessions, four kicks, four handballs. Long kick by Brereton. Well, the wind didn't have much effect on that, up towards the 10 metre square. Tuck almost took the mark. Bahaja tries to spoil. And a free kick he will get for a push in the back, which was quite obvious. Very nearly a mark to tuck, though. Bahaja, right in the kick-off area, and just adjacent to it, goes wide. Looks for Weston, juggled it, and takes it. Nagel is the runner around Wallace, and he's going back. Lobs it high towards centre wing. Payton is there with Merritt. Merritt gets the touch, can't take the mark. Williams scoops it out to Merritt. Up the half forward, Kink, O'Halloran, well caught, beautiful tackle, Renee. Play on, unbelievable. Oh, goodness me. Now, I think the ball may have been held to him by Renee Kink, who's an old campaigner in grand finals. Well, let's we'll watch it again on replay now. And yes, he's got it on him. He did have, had no chance. Good, good decision by umpire Nash. Yes, Ard runs in, puts his head down. No free kick. A ball up again to take place. This time at Essendon, set a half forward position. Payton loses it to Merritt. Vanderhaar's there. And about 14 others. It will be a free kick to Hawthorne. And if you can tell me what that's for, Lou, you win a pound. Yes. Uh, you got too, high, too high on that occasion. Well, uh, uh, we see the kick by Ayers, who's played a very good first quarter. The ball back out there. Brown again as Bob Skelton sits. Looks as though he's ready to fire today. He started to play good about 10 minutes before the end of that uh, first quarter hand pass. Coming over there to Kennedy, another fine player for Hawthorne. And a pass. Oh, Robertson just couldn't get there in time. And the ball is out of bounds on Hawthorne's half-forward line. It'll be about 60 metres around from their goal. There's Browden's mark again at the back of the pack. Ball back into play again. Wood picks it up. It's a hurried kick. Doesn't cover much distance. Back there towards the wing position. And a mark to Renee King. Coming well down from that half ball. And he's actually on the half back line. Ball across the centre half four. At the back there as Merritt goes to punch on. Gets the ball out. Good play by Merritt. Over to Hawk. has been a pretty quiet player so far. There's Danaher and Mew. Down goes Danaher. Mew gets the touch of the stumble too. But Danaher won't give in. 
And the umpire's battle free kick. It'll go to Mew. And the free kick's going Hawthorne's way at the moment. He's definitely holding the man on that occasion. That, uh, and Danaher realised that if he didn't grab Mew, Mew was off and running. So it was, a, well, a deliberate free kick, but worthwhile. 18 points the difference in favour of Hawthorne as the ball is back towards the centre of the ground. Off uh, Peyton's hands. There we see Knights juggling the ball. Finally, uh, a hand pass coming out from what? Not a good one. The umpire will ball it up out there towards the edge of the square. So we're at the three and a half minute mark of the second quarter. 18 points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. Knocked out by Madden. Wood having a tussle there with Duck. And once again, the umpire will ball it up. They had a half each there, I think. <laughs> well, I think uh, Tuck may have had a half Nelson on Wood. Waiting now for the umpire to bounce the ball. It'll be uh, Madden against Peyton again. Actually, uh, Madden still got that down. He's dominating the ruck knockouts, but uh, the bomber's not capitalising on that knockouts. So another ball up. That's three in a row now. And this doesn't help, help the brand of football, of course. Knocked out by Madden. Intercepted that time by Kennedy. Gets a hurried kick back there towards Knights. There's a chance now for Brereton. It bounces the wrong way. Going through as well as for the umpires. Found a free kick to Brereton. He was grabbed when he didn't have the ball. He'll take that free kick out towards the centre wing position. Dermot Brereton on centre wing. Oh, no Hawthorne players there at all. It's all Essendon folds. Up to centre field. Loose ball for Hawker to chase, which he does beautifully, Len Hawker. That it up for Ezard, who's already kicked the goal. Underground pass to Vanderhaar on his own. Vanderhaar on the goal square, down his first goal. Or should we say second? So Essendon, with a beautiful passage of play, opened up by Ezard. The run was on. So it started at the other end of the ground, but what's the finish of it now as Hawker got the hand pass across to Ezard. A little kick taken on the half volley by Van der Haar. The hand pass across the top but good defensive work. Essendon taking it away from defence after poor disposal by Hawthorne. So the skippers have both kicked two goals. Five and a half minutes gone. Second quarter. Hawthorne lead by 12 points. Knocked down by Madden again but Hawthorne are onto that. They're roving to him. Nobody can pick it up. In front is Neagle. Spoons it out, but the whistle had already gone. Now he had the whistle in his mouth and blew it before that hand pass came out. And so it will be a ball up right on the edge of the square in Essendon's right half forward line. Bounce down taking place six minutes in. Ball up out there on that half forward line for Essendon. 12 points down at the moment. McCarthy gets the ball out, or down goes uh, Wood that time, and tackle well was Bahaja dropping the ball. And the free kick to go to Tuck out there at half back. Oh, could be a 15 metre penalty against Bahaja. Wasn't too happy about the decision. And the free kick will actually go to Rodney E. So this brings him up to, uh, just off the uh, centre wing position. Chance now to send uh, Hawthorne deep into attack. It's a high kick, but doesn't cover much distance in front of Peyton. Punched away that time by Madden. Has a go for Neagle. A hand pass coming out for Bahaja. It's a hand pass back to Williams, but the wrong man grabbed by Tuck. He knocks it on quickly. Peyton goes for the tap on. Wallace comes in and overruns the ball. Back it goes to Vanderhaar, but chipping in nicely is Neagle. Doesn't know where to go. He finally finds Foles, and Foles goes for a long kick over the half forward line. Little Azar punched out by Ayers. Good player, scouting nicely is Robertson. And they bounce back into attack. There's a pass, a beautiful pass to Brereton. Has a chance to score. The hand pass comes over to Lovridge. Another one coming back to Matthews. And can Matthews kick this goal? It's a left footer. But he should have uh, given the, the hand, hand pass. pass. There's a left foot snap. There were two players sitting there on their own. Yes. So there's 13 points the difference. Five goals, 7.37. Hawthorne to Western, four goals. Straight 24 points. The ball back into play again. Oh, Heldon and uh, Vanderhaar, punched on by Vanderhaar, grabbed by Neagle, running around in circles, but he gets free this time at half back. Goes for a pass or a kick back there. Rodney E juggles it, but Kennedy once again is backing up well. The ball back there towards Judge Brereton flies, couldn't hold the mark. He goes after it again. They pile it on top of him. Finally kicked off the ground by Lovebridge, and the umpire's going to ball it up out there at half forward for uh, Essendon. Uh, Hawthorne, I should say, about uh, 50 metres out from their goal. 
ball up. Madden taps it down to Ezard. Up to centre wing. And out of bounds. Adjacent to the players interchange area. Brian will on the screen, the former Richmond captain. And coming on, Cameron Clayton, former Richmond player as well, as we see a boundary throw in. Up the way by Merritt this time, picked up by Kennedy. Mark taken out there by uh, Neagle, who is doing well this quarter. Neagle plays on. Tries to get the ball moving quickly. Over the top was Watson, who's been well covered today. Loveridge, is he out of bounds? Yes, as the boundary umpire, and it will be thrown in. Still virtually on the centre wing position, but tending towards Essendon's forward zone. Payton wins this one, he gets there first. Thumps it well clear, down about 35 metres. And it will be uh, still in play. Yes, Neagle paddles it back towards uh, Williams. And it will be a boundary throw in. Neagle and uh, Eid having a little bit of a dish up there. Don't do it again, says the umpire. No, he's had a free kick to Ronnie Eid. He goes for a short pass subsequently. That's out of bounds. A bit of slight altercation there that the crowd saw and the umpire likewise. I missed it myself. Well, Merv didn't learn from last week. I see. Picked up by Gary Folds. Peyton and uh, Watson. Robertson. On to Kennedy. That's a beautiful mark for Judge. He was looking for a 15-metre penalty. The umpire was onto that, and Ken Judge about, uh, well, he's on right half-forward flank. Well, Judge has looked very dangerous since coming on the ground, replacing uh, Bacanara. Goes for the long kick at the goal, but he's off target, and it's through for one point. So at the 10-minute mark of the second quarter of the 1983 grand final, it's Hawthorne five goals, 8.38 to Western four goals, straight 24 points. Waiting on the ball to come back into play. Perfect day for football. Sun shining as the ball is knocked out by Payton. Bahajar, Ayres is there too. They're all missing the ball at the moment. Bahajar's grabbed. He gets it out to Vandahar, but he's in plenty of trouble. Finally over to Neagle. Another hand pass coming out to Hurd. And the Bombers get it away from the danger zone through Clayton, who just came on the ground replacing Wood. And there's a mark taken by Merritt. And Roger Merritt just like a flash. A hand pass coming back to Western. A long shot at the goal. Not a bad sort of a kick, but it goes off target. Actually, the wind got that. And it's out of bounds in the forward pocket. Really carried it right across the face of goals that time. It's amazing what the wind can do, Luke. My word, it's pretty. It twists around down there, Bob, as we wait now for the free kick to go back there to Mew. Umpire said he's got a kick over the mark. So at the 11-minute mark, it's still the Hawthorne in front, 5-8-38. To Eston, four goals straight, 24 points. We see a mark taken there by Ludwig. A quick hand pass to Green. He's been a pretty quiet player so far. A hand pass out to Swab. Swab boots the ball long over the centre half forward position. The pack fly. Matthew steps the ball down a duck and Tuck has a pot shot at the goals. But will it make the distance? It'll be a goal. Now see the Rank Arena stereo video cassette recorder. So simple to operate with this cordless full function remote control. Even changes your TV channel. Loading is from the front and motorised. Plus Dolby control and full stereo sound facility. The Rank Arena. Champion video cassette recorders. Payton, almost in slow motion there as Loveridge goes over. Gets it back to Wallace. The umpire has already signalled a ball up though. I don't know whether Reed was injured or not. But DP Domenico will be very keen to get into the action. Knocked away by Madden. Kink. Palms it down. Bahaja. Smothered. Free kick Essendon's way. Bahaja to take the free kick. Bahaja at centre half forward. Goes for a short pass. No need to comment on that. Loveridge. Folds. High ball towards the outer side and a real rainmaker as Peter Schwab gets underneath it. Gives it to Loveridge. Loveridge on centre wing. Bertie's got it. Making a lot of fundamental mistakes, uh, the Bombers, at the moment, Bob. And this with Hawthorne not able to capitalise on it so far. But they might this time as Matthews takes the mark. 
And I do notice we did say that Brereton uh, was starting to look dangerous and getting away from Bradbury. The shift has been made and Folds is now over onto Brereton. Lee Matthews has kicked two goals, as has the Essendon skipper Terry Danaher. Matthews some 35 to 40 metres out from goal. What's he done with that one? <laughs> Judging by the crowd, it's a goal. So three goals to Matthews and a very valuable one for Hawthorne. And in the 83 grand final, Hawthorne notch up the half century, 7 8 50 to Essendon, four goals, 24 points. Yes, it takes one player to do the leading, and in this case it was Lee Matthews. That was a lovely pass by Di Pietro Menico, putting it out in front of Matthews, giving him the chance to run at it. He got away from Carey, and now we see the result. Matthews kicking his third goal, so it's 7 8 to 4 straight. Approaching the 14-minute mark now of the second quarter. Knocked away by Madden, and again. Plenty of Hawthorne players are there. Bahaja beats three of them, though. Gives it to Kink, a little bit slow to get rid of the ball. Clayton trying to get, uh, grab hold of it. Umpire Kevin Smith has decided on a bounce. Ball up at centre-half forward for the Bombers. Their four goals, 24 points to Hawthorne, 7 8 50 into this quarter by about 14 and a half minutes. That's the second quarter of the 1983 Grand Final. Knocked out by Matt doing well in the ruck. There's Swab getting a hurried kick to beat Pietro Menico. And the big fellas up like a flash down to Brewer. He couldn't hold the mark, but the umpires found a free kick. Somebody's going to get booked. It'll go against uh, Judge for having a go at uh, Hawker, I should imagine. So the umpire taking the book out, and he certainly won't mistake that number. Number one, it's not hard to re uh, remember, really, is it? Yes, a bad time, too, because Hawthorne were into attack and uh, really going forward. It, it, uh, that is really penalising the side from judges' point of view. Well, they had a chance to really score then, Hawthorne, and they've had a, certainly a lot more shots than uh, Essendon, 15 to 4. A glancing blow, it was. There's the kick now by Hawker. It's a high one over centre-half forward. In comes Ayres, couldn't hold the mark. Punched out by Ezard, again by Robertson, down towards the uh, Essendon goal, but it's out of bounds. Out of bounds about 45 metres around from the Essendon goal on their half-forward line. Capacity house here today, around about the 115,000 mark. Perfect day for football. Bahajar going after, he's upended. Umpire said it'll be a free kick. No, against him. That's harsh. Huh? He said for throwing the ball, so oh. the free kick will go to uh, Russell Green down there at half-back. <laughs> Rather a confusing free kick by umpire Nass that time. Chance for Tuck to mark it, and he doesn't let him down. He goes for a hand pass, trying to find Judge. He's already been reported, got one in the back. The hand pass coming out now to Bradby's in a bit of trouble. He's grabbed too high, and he'll get a free kick. 15-metre penalty. Well, finally, a short pass by Bradby. It's a good one, and marked by Danaher. He's pretty well guarded here so far. He's already kicked uh, two goals. Down it goes. The two Hawthorne players fighting for it. Finally, a hand pass from McCarthy. Tapped on by Robertson over to Kennedy. He's played a great game today down there in defence. A short pass to Mew. And he grabs it right on the line. 11 kicks, 11 kicks and four hand passes to Kennedy so far in the game. That's a fine effort. His dad would be very proud. Knight's going for the mark, but out maneuver that time. And a good mark to Weston. Who plays on. Up to half forward. Plenty of Essendon tall timber, Madden can't take it, Gary Ayres at the back, two Essendon players to one Hawthorne, it's marked by Schwab. Not doing a bad job out there either, Bob, is he? He's doing well, Lou. And, uh, on the Mew, streaming downfield, looking for Matthews. Oh! oh! What a grab from the skipper. And he's getting old, he's about 33 years of age, I don't know where he got up that high. He had a help from the, from the shoulder of Gary. That's, That's out. Uh, the grand final mark so far, isn't it? I'll guarantee when he got up that high, he was saying to himself, how the heck am I going to get down now? He's kicked three. He's missed that one, has he? Or is it three? It's a goal. Hey, Holden owners, don't gamble on service and parts for your Holden. Keep your car at the peak of performance with expert service and parts from your Holden dealer. Get the benefit of the latest diagnostic techniques, expert mechanics, specialised service equipment, quality GM and AC Delco parts, the parts backed by a GMH nationwide warranty. For competitively priced service and parts, see your local Holden dealer. Nobody knows Holden better. 17 minutes gone, Weston being moved on to Matthews after he brought up his fourth goal. And Carey off the ground. Free kick to Weston at centre field, going to Bahaja. 
who tries to get past Tuck and DP at Domenico. Now it goes to Neagle. Neagle from right centre. No mark. Down to Hawker. Bahaja. Watson calling for it and gets it. Watson right half forward flank. He's about 45 metres out from goal. Kerry may and be injured. He's going straight up the race. Mm. Well, he's jogging off. He can't be too injured, surely. Tim Watson, right half forward. Just about in the forward pocket. He's a little bit closer in than that. Into the goal square. McCarthy will go the punch. And it's rushed through for one behind to Essendon. And so the scoreboard in the 83 grand final, 56 to 25 in favour of Hawthorne. And we're just on the 19-minute mark of this second quarter. Essendon's first minor score, Lou. And then we see the ball kicked out towards Tuck and Payton there too. Neither take the mark. Umpires found a free kick. It'll go to Hawthorne again. The Essendon crowd not too happy about the decision that was on the shoulder. Well, they hit each other. Finally, the ball goes out wide and a mark here to Wallace. And oh, he's grabbed around the neck. It could be a 15-metre penalty. Billy's playing the part of her that time. There's the kick by Wallace over the centre half forward position. Knights in front, the ball pushed out, kicked on by Matthews. A chance for Judge to grab it. A hand pass coming over to Robinson. A short pass again, looking down there, and there'll be a mark to Lovely right on the boundary line of the Hawks. At the moment, are looking pretty good. And it just goes to show what Bob mentioned in the early part that they uh, had that week's rest. It may be. Those three games telling on the Bombers at the moment. That's the distance. It'll be about uh, 25 to 30 metres out from goal. A difficult shot for young Lovridge. But Lump, yeah, he's already kicked one goal. The umpire bringing him around. He put him in the crowd. Well, let's see what the little fella can do with this. Lines them up. There's the kick. But he's up target and it's through for one point. So just on the 20-minute mark of the second quarter. Let's go down to our man on the fence down there. That's Stephen Phillips with a report on uh, Stephen Carey. Thanks, Lou. The club doctor has got him down in the rooms. He's done his shoulder by the look of it in the first quarter. A free kick going uh, Essendon's way. The recipient will be Timmy Watson. Watson at left half-back flank. Three kicks to Watson only. Making the most of this one. And he actually kicks it. He's run right across the half-back line. Williams. Look for Watson again, and we'll find him. 30-metre handball, too long for Clayton and out of bounds. Well, you see Bob Watson running that uh, distance like he did. He threw all his side out of position because they didn't know where he was going. They couldn't pick out what spot he was going to punch the ball or kick it. Yes, that's the thing that Watson seemed to have gotten out of yes. this game. Yes, well, was the Timmy Watson of old, wasn't it? Well, Wallace uh, scragged and could have been in trouble. Tuck, short kick to centre field. DP Domenico leading in the race for the ball, paddles it wide. Neagle will get there first. Oh, DP Domenico up into Vanderhaar. He didn't mind giving away a free kick. No, because no. Neagle was going to get it anyway. No, that was uh, an educated free kick, I guess. Vanderhaar takes the free kick up the half forward. Mew will go the spoil. In comes McCarthy. Out to centre wing. Knocked away by Vanderhaar. That will just about be out of bounds. In fact, that is the case. It will be thrown in on centre wing. The members stand side. An interesting move by Sheedy. Uh, by, uh, Hawthorne, I should say, and that's uh, Alan Jeans, and that that's DP at Domenico, when coming onto the ground to replace Ede, didn't go to the wing. Uh, he went to the centre to pick up Nagel. Wallace does it beautifully. The hand pass is not great to tuck, though. The tap on, intercepted by Kennedy. Back to Wallace. High to half forward for Hawthorne. Matthews in front. Ball fisted clear. Picked up by Hurd. Folds. Folds at half-back flank. Somebody's down. The whistle is gone. A free kick. Another booking, it looks like. Vanderhaar. That's two. Well, they're getting reported. That's two players reported now for Hawthorne. Uh, the judge, uh, the first bloke to go, and now, of course, number 21, Bird. And, of course, we should point out for American viewers and viewers that aren't too familiar with the game, there is no order off rule in Australian football. The players face a tribunal in the next few days or so. Free kick going out there to Foles. We're at the uh, 22 and a half minute mark of this uh, second quarter of the 83 grand final. Fourth on 57 points to Eston, uh, 25 points. Well, we're waiting for uh, Foles to kick this one back into play. He's had it a half back across the centre field. Mew goes for one hand and he's got it once more. That's a good mark by Mew. This back line of Hawthorne is standing up pretty well. A hand pass coming over to Rodney Ayers. A a very good player, as the, uh, 
Ball goes out there. Gary, as I should say, punched out by Ludbridge. Bradbury fumbles. Coming out of the back has swabbled the ball. A hand pass to Russell Green out there at half forward. A long kick towards the goals. I think he might have put this one through. He has. What a goal. The America's Cup. The Decider. Live from Newport, Rhode Island. 1 a.m. Sunday on 7. 7.30 Monday in Quincy. Yesterday, Samson attacked my little girl. Emily is dead. I'm going to make sure that none of your dogs ever take another innocent life. A life. case of deadly protection in Quincy, 7.30 Monday. 9.963 Hawthorne to Western, 4.125. And it's Madden getting a hurried kick over their forward line. Has a chance now for copping on the ground. He's grabbed. The ball goes to the ground again. The umpire said there'll be a free kick. Goes to Hawthorne, but he calls play on us. Kennedy gets it away again. And Di Pierre Domenico juggles the mark out there at halfback. Hawthorne really throwing themselves into the fray at the moment. Oh, there's a struggle there for the ball. Picked up by Tucker. Hand play. Oh, grabs it around the neck. And he'll get a free kick. The Bombers making a foolish mistakes. Over to Tuck. Tuck with a high kick back there towards Judge. Judge in front. That's a great mark by Judge in front of uh, a herd, I think it is. Yes, herd. Well, they're looking good at the moment. They've had uh, 18 shots to five so far on the match. That's how much they've been into attack. What are we waiting on here now? He, he, no, he, he, he called play on, and so the umpire, the boundary umpire, has said he was over the boundary line. Well, he's closer uh, than we are, Bob. Yeah, well, he, was, he had to be over the boundary line <laughs> because that's where he was. Well, OK. It's a, it's a ridiculous it's... rule as far as I'm concerned. Knocked out the herd and a chance for Peyton to take the mark out there at, uh, on the centre wing position. They're looking good, Hawthorne. Really looking strong at the moment as the ball is booted over that half forward line again. They've been into attack for most of this quarter. And we see uh, Madden doing a pretty good job on the ruck, take the mark. A hand pass coming over to Hurd. He's put off balance as he boots the ball back there towards the wing position. Going after this Williams, he's not fast enough and the ball is out of bounds on the centre wing position. Boundary throw in. Right in front of our commentary position. Oh, it's a wrestle. Payton wins the tap. Neagle fumbles, Watson doesn't. Caught, got it out to Williams. Who plays on? Mew and Danaher. Mew's too tall. Judged it beautifully. The pass downfield, looking for Knights. Who marks? Great grab. Knights at centre half forward, or perhaps a little bit short of that position. Who's he looking for? Judge. Yes, Mark. Well, Hawthorne taking plenty of grabs. Eastern defence under a lot of pressure at the moment. But They've no chance of running over the boundary line now from this position. I wouldn't think so. One to remember. I dare say it wouldn't happen too often. Yeah. Deep here Domenico coming off. He gave them a lift while he was out there too. Yes, he did. Long kick. That's close. And the goal. Ken Judge brings up his first goal. He's taken some good marks, Judge, and has done well since he came on to replace his fellow West Australian Gary Bacanara. Five marks uh, the Judge has taken, and uh, every one of them has been one grab. And uh, he certainly uh, has. You know, maybe Hawthorne had some sort of, uh, what would you call it, uh, thick set looking into the future when they put Judge on the interchange bench. So it's 10 9 69 to 4 1 25 in favour of Hawthorne. Essendon bench looking a little bit worried at the moment as well they might but there's a long way to go yet Schwab hooks it up to half forward Brereton marks in front and also are playing in front so I suppose they should be getting the best of the marks Brereton's done well long way out of goal up the full forward Knights almost takes the grab Walsh backs him up uh, well it's out to Hawker who has the run folds short pass downfield too long for Payton Kennedy's there. Has he got the mark? No. Play on. In trouble. Shrugs the tackle well. Back it comes in board to Green. In trouble. Out to Reed, who's just back on the ground. At the judge, who kicked the last one. This won't be a goal. It's off target. Mark to Burton. No out of bounds. Or one behind. It is the latter. And so Hawthorne now to 10 goals, 10, 70 points. Leading Essendon 4 1, 25. 27 and a half minutes gone of the second quarter. Ball back into play again. Now is a chance for Pulse to break clear. Runs at the pocket. Shoots the ball out towards that uh, wing position. Punched out by uh, 
by McCarthy. Reed gets a hurried kick, hooks it back. Actually, Knights has got the mark. They can't do anything wrong at the moment. Hawthorne. Knights with a long kick up there into the goal square. Burn in the front, Puzzy. Over the top of them now, and they uh, look to me as if they're a little bit rattled, Essendon. And uh, I think the lack of grand final experience is uh, starting to tell at the moment. Well, they've thrown players around everywhere, too, Lou. And uh, you know, Vanderhaar is now on the half back line, popping into the forward pocket. Admittedly, copying, you know, is a forward pocket player. Their, their back line players of all you know, just about everyone bar Walsh has been moved. And there's a goal kicked by Byrne, and they're going further ahead at the 20 uh, eight and a half minute mark. And that's goal number two to Byrne. 4-4 11 goals, 10-76 to Essendon, 4 goals, 125. And of course they've had 21 shots to 5 and that uh, thing itself uh, tells you how many times they've been to attack, Bob. You see the advantage here of, of a player being in the front position because it wasn't a long kick, it dropped and all, it dropped almost straight down and that's why the front man got the mark. But uh, Essendon have thrown copping in on the ball at this stage, coming Wallace coming out uh, to the forward pocket, and uh, not Wallace, Watson. But uh, Hawthorne completely on top at the moment in all the departments. 51 points the difference at the uh, 29 and a half minute mark of the second quarter of the 1983 grand final. And Hawthorne looking really good at the moment. Knocked out by Madden, still trying very hard. Picked up by Roger Merritt. They badly need a goal at the moment. The Bombers back, it comes now. Danaher goes down, New pounces on him. This allows Green to get the ball away, and they send it back towards the centre of the ground. And high ball up towards centre field. Uh, Halloran recovers, then loses it. Out it comes to Payton, who taps it beautifully to Ede. That was very clever. Ede in trouble, chasing his Vanderhaar, who gets offloaded. Down to Matthews, who's outnumbered. Madden, well caught, Loveridge, sharks it beautifully, and a shot at goal is off target and a free kick to Essendon. Madden will take the free kick. But, uh, Essendon looking really down at the moment. I'm sure Kevin Sheedy will be hoping for the siren so that he can really try and get them to regroup. Neagle. At the back is O'Halloran. Robertson. Green. Green at centre wing. Oh, low pass to Ede as a gem. Ede on the run at half forward. Looks for the tall timber. Byrne and Knights. Walsh, one Three hit. the Knights. What was that for, Bob? Pushing the back. back. I think he might have helped them a little bit, but it was there on the same, Bob. The siren's gone. Knights will, of course, have the shot. Yes, he might have helped it along. Well, Knights has kicked two points and one out of bounds so far, so the odds probably about three to one him kicking it. And of course, he started his career as a defender, and defenders, of course, aren't the best kicks. That one's the exception that proves the rule, I guess. He's put a nice pitch it through for a goal just prior to half time, and that'll give the Hawks a lift, I'm certain. Knights his first goal in at half time. Bounce the ball to start the third quarter of the 83 grand final. And we've seen comebacks before in grand finals. Can Essendon come back? And they get the first kick out of the centre through Glenn Hawker up towards half forward. Vanderhaar playing there now, I see. Ball tapped out to Williams, who's caught, but the hand pass is a good one. Hawker again, caught. Mark to Merritt, who plays on. This could be their first goal. This will lift them if it is. In towards the goal square. Uh, Halloran was there and takes the mark for Hawthorne. Out wide, Weed. I'm talking about wingman. Uh, Folds is on the wing against. Uh, Swab, Clayton to the half-back flank on Judge. Well, plenty of moves made by the Essendon uh, coach, and that's a beautiful mark taken by Peter Knights. Five marks to Knights. And Shane Hurd, uh, Lee Matthews, third opponent. Wallace at centre field. Good kick from Wallace, looking for Matthews. Hurd, oh, beautiful one-hander, just not uh, completing it enough. Matthews, a shot at goal. to Matthews and that was unbelievable because Shane Hurd almost took a superb mark one-handed and Matthews pinched it and kicked a goal well how, how do you feel from an Essendon point of view now Lou when uh, you see Shane Hurd juggle the ball Bradbury came on the scene and that's a remarkable goal from Matthews from that position and we've mentioned a couple of times you lead by example Matthews has done just that one and a half minutes gone third quarter Thumped down by Madden. 
Knocked back by Kennedy. On to Payton. Or Grubber. Brereton tries to get it to Judge. Now he tries to get it out to Schwab, who's covering plenty of territory. Schwab into full forward. Wagas, well smothered, out the judge. Judge doesn't know which way to go. Goes backwards, actually, and finds Schwab. Intelligent play. Schwab plays on. And going the long way around at the mark taken by Kennedy. Kennedy at uh, centre-half forward, a long way from goal. But I think that was really, really showed the confidence that Hawthorne have at the moment. Going backwards. Well, they got him in a better position, Pete. <laughs> 20 possessions to Kennedy. Is that a score? No, three Essendon players are there to make sure it wasn't. One of uh, whom is Shane Hurd. Hurd gets it back, short pass to uh, Folds, and Folds has taken the mark. Taken the mark down there in the back pocket, and Hawthorne looking very good at the moment. 13 goals, 10.88 to Eston, four goals, 125. The ball out there towards the wing position. Nearly a mark, it'll be a mark, and a free kick to Burr on the shoulder. Not Burr, I mean McCarthy. He's done well, Lou McCarthy. My word, they've got many good players here today. Kicked by McCarthy, it's a long one over the centre half forward position. Oh, just held oh. at that time, Matt, but the umpire being a little bit sympathetic paid the free kick. Nagel running across the front and accepts the hand pass. Had a fairly good second quarter, but they haven't had many good players. They're messing about a bit, the Bombers. There's the kick over the half forward. They've got to go directly to the goals. O'Halloran goes to the punch, gets a hand, the hand pass out to uh, uh, Pate. He's covered. He goes for the hand pass to Wallace. Wallace, he doesn't waste any time, boots the ball back towards the centre of the ground. And there's a good mark taken there by uh, Matt. The hand pass coming over now. And the ball is out wide, and the mark taken there by Baharja. He'd be about 50 metres out from goal. There's the kick, it's a good one for the little fella. Off the top of the pack and through for one point. So they're four goals, 226 Essendon. The Hawthorne 3288 in a very nice position for the 1983 grand final. Yes, and their leading goal kicker, Terry Danaher, now is at centre half back against Weird. And they've made many changes, a hand pass coming over again from Mew. Back it goes to Russell Green. They're playing with a lot of confidence. The ball shot up there towards the half four line in front of Matthews. That time was heard. Good play, a short pass, it'll be okay. Hawker's got it at centre field, a long kick down there, looking for the big fella, but he's inside the back of the mark for McCarthy, as Bob said before, doing a great job in defence. Madden couldn't get over the top of him that time. Into this third quarter by four and a half minutes. Looking for Reed, who doesn't let him down on the half-back flank. Up the centre wing, not a well-directed kick. Wallace in plenty of trouble there. Caught, gets rid of it in a hurry. Bradbury, likewise caught. Was it too high? In the back or whatever. Bradbury's kick. And looking for a 15-metre penalty and will get one. Watson about to come off the ground, Pete. Well, that's interesting. Up to full forward. Oh, Robertson, what a mark. Even the little guys are taking screamers at the moment. Here's, here's a short pass. Robertson coming off the ground. Not Robertson, Watson. Good mark to Wood in the meantime. The hand passes on. Back it comes to Kink ultimately. Calling forward to Zezard. Kink goes long in towards full forward. Here's a chance for Essendon now. Madden, Williams, snap at goal. Out of bounds, is it? Yes, it is. They on can't the do a thing right at the moment, Pete, can they? Mm, Madden seemed to have his name on that one too. I'm doing all the attacking in this third quarter. Deed goes for the short pass. They had the sun in their eyes there, the players. Nobody could pick it up. Robertson, Wallace, if he gets the bounce, he doesn't. Long to Payton, Green, Green from centre half forward. Walsh is in the last line of defence and marks. Or is it a behind? No, it's the latter. I thought he might have played the mark, one behind the Hawthorne. 13 11 to 4 2, 89 to 26. And the ball back out there towards the half back line, knocked away by Foles. Matthews in the front, Posse Herds there, he won't give in. They both go down, it's over the line and out of bounds. So it's out of bounds about uh, 40 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. At the moment, their score's looking good 13 11 89 to Eston 4 2 26. Just on the six and a half minute mark of this third quarter, punched out by Brereton. Well played by Swab as he kicks the ball back there towards the full forward position. Comes down a judge, he's in plenty of trouble there, tries to get a hand pass out. Finally we see uh, the ball cleared away by Denner, but it's smothered by Byrne. Byrne goes on top of it, plenty of scrambly play at the moment. And the umpire will ball it up about 35 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. 
Well, the Bombers want a couple of quick goals now. They're going to be into this grand final or have any chance at all. Brewerland gets a tap down. Back it goes to Tuck. He can't get clear. And once again, the umpire will ball it up. Well, we've got a bit of a dead pocket there at the moment. Oh, here's a streaker. You wouldn't want to know it, would you? Oh, we've got a bloke coming on this time as a streaker. No one's taking much notice of him. Last year was the girl. They certainly took notice of her as the ball was finally picked up by Walsh. Gets around two opponents. Now he's clear. That's good play on the part of Walsh. But the kick is OK. It's a bit short. A hand pass from Bahaja over to Rene Kick at centre field. He's going to crash through the back this time. He goes for a long kick up there towards the full forward position. But there's nobody home. And an easy mark taken there by Ahura Hull. He's certainly not playing with any confidence. Uh, Essen at the kick out wide now. And there's Robertson. He played a fine game today too. But he's had plenty of mates. A beautiful pass and a mark to Watts. And Stricker, by the way, was pounced on by a policeman that attracts her very quickly. Wallace has kicked downfield, looking for Knights, who can't take it. Out to Brereton. Lobs it high. Hurd should get there first. Bahaja, ridden into the ground by Judge, just about out of bounds. It will be a free kick for holding the man to Bahaja. Goes wide. Oh, Tuck almost pinned uh, Bradbury, but he has got the mark. Bradbury in the left back pocket. Looks for Danaher. Neagle is there and marks. Neagle looking to play on and all for a 15 metre penalty. And no Hawthorne player there. They've got the run now. Here's uh, Weston. Weston at centre wing. In front of Halloran. Just about took the grab. Robertson backing up beautifully. The handball over the top. Knights will have to go the knock on and does. Matthews, well out from goal. Bounce boots Merritt. Doesn't matter. Back to Bahaja. Oh, he's got in circles. And Tucker's there. I think that sums it up, doesn't it, Lewis? It certainly does. They're not playing with any confidence at all and making lots of mistakes. There's Matthews getting around his opponent pretty quick. He's already kicked five goals. Goes for another one, but he's up target. This time it's through for one point. So just over the nine-minute mark, kicked 5-2 as a matter of fact. We see Hawthorne 13-12, 90 points to Eston 4-2-26. The ball back into play again. Two Hawthorne players actually spoil each other that time. Peyton and Tuck on the boundary line. Picked up nicely by Bahaja. The kick falls a bit short. And as I said before, they're not even looking for their man. An easy mark to Rodney Eaton. That's the way to pass the ball. We see Wallace with it now out there on the centre wing position. It's a high kick over centre half forward. And uh, there's a chance now for Hawthorne to get a goal here. If they're lucky enough, no bouncing on it now is Danaher playing down there at full back. This quarter finally picked up by Weston. A short pass. It's OK. It's grabbed by Hawker. And Hawker's got a chance now to give a hand pass back. It'll be OK, and it's finally picked up uh, by Fowles. A pass out wide, and Little Hazard dropped the mark. And he's having a great battle with Kennedy. No doubt Hawthorne's best player, in my opinion. And the ball is out of bounds on uh, Eston's half-forward line, about 70 metres around from their goal. But at the moment, they're not going too well. The score, 13-12, 90, Hawthorne to Eston, 4-2-26. And we're just over the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. Williams and Schwab. Williams wins out. Up to full forward. And another good ball. That's a 15-metre penalty against Copping. It won't matter. Oh, he's played on. Through from behind, is it? Yes, rushed through. It's unbelievable that Bobby did, made a fine job of that mark and then uh, did that foolish thing of the hand pass. A rush of blood, perhaps. Maybe so. And uh, he's done such a great job. I suppose you must expect the odd mistake. Peyton has the mark. He is. Chips it around the boundary line, looking for Schwab, who gets one in the back, and will get the free kick for that offence. Still the best tackle of the day was by that uh, policeman in the tracksuit on the streaker. It was a gem. Ten kicks, five handballs to Ayres. Mark in front to uh, Dermot Brereton. Looking for a 15-metre penalty, but the umpire not having it. Two Hawthorne players on loose centre field. One of those is Loveridge. Loveridge on to Green, who's already kicked the goal before. Steadies for another one. Another long shot. Is it Jim? I see of National's home video systems. The more I see you, the more I realize why I like them. They've got more pro features, more cameras than anyone, a portable that's more portable. 
I tell you, National builds home video systems like professionals want. And TV sets good enough to go with them. They're big entertainers. From National. Merritt, caught. At the folds, high ball, back towards centre wing. Underneath it is Green, who kicked the last goal and makes an unbelievable mistake. They all look easy from up here. Air sees the ball out of bounds. I think we could make excuses, Lou. Well, possibly so, but when you're that far in front, we will forgive him. So it's 14 12 96 Hawthorne and Essendon down there on a very low score of 4 3 27. Just on the 12 and a half minute mark as the umpire finds a free kick and it'll go to Pate. Bob, about 10 minutes as a 15 metre penalty against, uh, against uh, the big fella Roger Merritt over to Wallace. Been a pretty good player too. He's had a million kicks. It's flattened after he uh, kicked the ball. The pencil down. And we see Roger Merritt will get recorded. That brings a loud cheer from the crowd. And of course, no doubt he collected. That's the third player to go today. First of all, Judge Everett is. Uh, we see it in action. Oh, I don't know I don't if that know was worth a report or not. Oh, oh he's got it. him down a bit low. I, don't I think. think it was, but he said. <laughs> <laughs> There's Knights having a shot at goal. It's a long kick. But it's through for one point. So 13 minutes gone, and uh, it's Hawthorne 14, 13, 97 to Eston 4, 3, 27. And there's no doubt about it. Brereton started to look a pretty good player at centre half four, about 10 minutes into that before the end of that first quarter, Bob. Yes, he really has forced uh, Essendon to throw their side around. When you've got to put your leading goal kicker of the first half into defence, it shows the desperation they're under. Ball back there towards uh, Hawthorne's half four line, picked up by Swabby paid a free uh, kick, then he called play on, up to Matthews and Hurd. But it's over the top of the heads and the ball will go out of bounds in that forward pocket about 20 metres around uh, from the Hawthorne goal. Lou, it was five minutes into the second quarter that uh, Essendon kicked their last goal. Carey back on replacing Popping as we have a boundary throw in forward pocket for Hawthorne. Byrne and Judge, they've also been reported. It'll be a busy night at the Tribunal. Loveridge's snapshot is off target. Matthews is there. Can't, lost sight of the ball, actually. And a chance for the Bombers to get clear, which they do through her. Schwab in front, folds behind. The matter takes the mark. Thought about the handball. Folds at right half-back flank. In towards centre wing. Chipping in, Robertson. They're just falling apart, Aston. They just feel as though they're not out there, don't they? It looks that way at the moment. This, this is a perfect example. Kink was 30 metres away and made no attempt to get to the second place. Oh, Matthews got one. You never guess who it is. He's gone again. Oh, God, I don't know about this one. Oh, what do you reckon, Bob, about that? I don't think Lee's too concerned. No, the one that uh, down Terry Wallace, uh, which was not a report of an incident earlier, looked far more severe than that. Now, Roger Merritt discussed with the uh, report, but still it's going in the book and you can't do much about that. So that's four reports. And there's no doubt about Matthews going for goal number six. And that's 15 why he's metres the as well, don't forget. 15 metres. This really makes him the champion that he is. Uh, when the big occasions uh, come along, Pete, he just lifts himself right to the top, doesn't he? Five goals to Matthews and a chance to make it number six. We've seen a whole lot of champions in Australia. Now see the Rank Arena Stereo Video Cassette Recorder. So simple to operate. With this cordless, full-function remote control. Even changes your TV channel. Loading is from the front and motorised. Plus Dolby control and full stereo sound facility. Champion video cassette recorders. Well, Hawthorne opening up a very useful lead at the moment over Essendon. 16 minutes gone. Wallace. Kick only travels about two metres. Good tackle on Folds. A push in the back, says the umpire. Folds to take the free kick. Gives it to Carey, who fumbles. Chance for Wallace again. He too fumbles. Out it goes to Payton. Bahaja should be able to beat him. He does. Folds. Wood. Too long for him. Mark to Mew. Need at half-back. 
goes right across the ground with that one, but the bounce my favour is, if he can get to it. Very greasy, Ezard over the top. He should go for the kick now, Ede. No, the handball still on to Green. They're very confident, Hawthorne. That it goes to the pacey Robertson. Shrugs one tackle, beautifully done, Robertson. Up to full forward and Matthews. Brereton backs him up, Walsh in the pocket. Out of bounds, no, he is, but the ball isn't. Now it's out, just. And so a boundary throw in, left half forward for uh, Hawthorne. At the 17-minute mark of the third quarter. Merritt, the knock now, I beg your pardon, Madden. Wins it out, but hits it straight to Judge, who tries to get it to Tuck, successfully executes that manoeuvre, it's touched. Knocked down by Madden again, Byrne. Kicked it straight to Danaher, who pinches it. Danaher upfield. Looking for Vanderhaar, O'Halloran is there. Well, Wood tried to steal it and lost it. Mew gets it over to Kennedy. Kennedy short, Ede on centre wing. Oh, they're breaking away clear now as the ball goes over there to Wallace. For me, the half four, this looks dangerous. A long shot at goal up there to Burn and Miles. He's put it through. A magnificent goal. And what a pass the Bombers are getting at the moment. 17, just on 18 minutes gone at 16 goals, 13, 109. Hawthorne to Western, four goals, 327. I don't think I've seen a side fall to pieces uh, so much as that's happened this grand final, Bob. No, there was a lot of people critical of North Melbourne last week, uh, Lou, and uh, they, you know, for the way that they collapsed, and it's not much different at the moment. Set about again. And Hawthorne looking good for the 1983 uh, grand final. No doubt about that. They've played superb football, and Eston not giving much resistance at the moment. As the bounce again, Madden and Payton. Madden goes for a hefty one, well intercepted that time by Mew. Mew's kick is down over the half forward line again. Matthews overruns it. It's knocked back by Hurd, coming in as Robertson. And what a fine game he's played as he scoops it out now to Peter Knights. He gets around about four opponents, hooks the ball right across that half forward line. It doesn't travel very far. A chance now for Swab to mark it. Down goes Danaher, the umpire said he was pushed in the back. So the Eston skipper will take the free kick at centre-half back as he goes for a short pass. There's a chance for Madden to mark. He does. But he's back there at half-back. Goes for a hand pass out to Neagle on his own at, uh, out towards the wing position. Fires it wide, looking there for Wood, and Wood's taken a mark. Well, the ex-Richmond player has been off the ground once, but he's not playing that well today. He's got plenty of mates. At the back that time is Ayres. Finally picked up by McCarthy. That's a dangerous hand pass. Back it goes to Ezard. But there's plenty of Hawthorne defenders down there backing up as McCarthy picks it up. An easy hand pass coming out to uh, Tuck. Very little resistance there from Est at the moment. Payton couldn't hold that one. Carey juggles the ball, goes after it again. But he can't pick it up. Finally, it comes back now to Weston. A hand pass back there to Danaher. A nice uh, balk. He's in a bit of trouble here now, but he gets away from Tuck. And finally shoots the ball over the half-forward line. As we see Robertson come out, he can't pick it up. Hawk has grabbed, he goes down. And finally Tuck gets a hurried kick out wide. Coming out to meet it now is Green, and he'll settle the situation down uh, for Hawthorne. And get a 15-metre penalty, of course. Yes, it brings him well over the half-back line now. And at the moment, we see 16-13, uh, 109 on the board to Hawthorne, of Western 4-3-27. Just on the 20 and a half minute mark as Knights boots it across the half forward. Off the top of the pack. That's Hurd going for the punch. He goes down. And the umpire said Matthews collected him on the shoulder. And Hurd will take that free kick a little short of half back. Neagle. Oh, he's in trouble. Now he uh, gets around the tackle. Up to centre wing. Knights one-handed. Can't mark it. Oh, beautifully done. Back to Wallace, who's caught. Back it comes to Hawker. Oh, Tuck gets uh, flattened from behind. And is not too good. Tuck looks in all sorts of bother there. Oh. Dear, oh dear. Not like Tuck not to get straight no. up, is it? Matthews takes the mark in the meantime, so Buccanara down in the first few minutes, and Michael Tuck now down. So Hawthorne certainly getting their injury worries, and they've had a couple of players reported. That will be a hip out. A free kick going to Essendon's uh, Cameron Clayton. Tuck getting back up. Seems to be OK. Well, that's good news. We see a replay of the incident. He got collected from behind oh. by Carey, was it? Danaher doing some useful work in defence down there. Delivers the ball up towards centre wing. Byrne, uh, McCarthy, back to Schwab. 
Schwab running left half forward. Wallace comes in for the Shepherd. Long shot by Schwab is off target and through for one behind of a Hawthorne score, which moves along to 110 points. Essendon 4 3, 27. Roger Merritt having a drink. 21 and three quarter minutes gone, third quarter. Needs more than the drink at the moment. Depends what's in it, though. They want some fire water, Pete. Ball comes back into play through Clayton. Chance for uh, Schwab again. The Hawthorne wingman gets around Danaher. One of the short pass is uh, Errant. And the mark taken by Weston. Weston at centre half back. Weston goes straight up centre field. Looking for Merritt. McCarthy. The knock on is there by Merritt. Opens it up for Williams. Oh, Robertson top one but comes through beautifully. Well done, Colin Robertson. That was guts. Wallace up to Matthews. He picks it up. Yes. And the mark played to the Hawthorne skipper. And Matthews about 55 metres out from goal has already kicked six goals. And uh, played a great game too, but he's had plenty of friends out there. Not many weak players. I can't find one weak player in the Hawthorne lineup at the moment. As the kick by Matthews. Let's see the result. Cover the distance. And it's through for one point. So at the 23 minute mark, we see Hawthorne 16-15-111. To Westendon, 8 a 4 3 27, a difference of 84 points. The chance now for uh, Clayton to get a hand pass back there to her. Another one coming over to Ezard out there at half back. Got a chance to go for a bit of a run. Takes the ball to centre field, drives it over the half forward line. Coming in there is Green. And the umpire's paying the mark that he's called play on because that would penalise uh, Hawthorne as uh, we see how Elwin drive it around and Knights couldn't hold the mark, but he goes after the game. Showing plenty of confidence in the front of the pack, then overruns it, picks up, picked up now by Bahaja. A hand pass coming out there to Danaher. He's been shifted, as we mentioned before, to centre half back. Back it goes to Wood. Another hand pass coming over to Williams, and they go back into attack, but there's no one up there. And an easy mark taken here by Kennedy. Still playing a great game here in Robertson. Out to Mule. There's another fine player for Hawthorne, too. Um, we see Burn off the ground and Di Pietro Mene go on as it goes out to Madden and Payton, but the Madden has a bit of bad luck there. In comes Neagle, down goes Payton. This gives Neagle an even break to get away now. Shows too much pace for the big ruckman. Finally drives the ball over the half four. There's Kennedy at the back going the punch of the mark and a beautiful mark to Kennedy. What a game he's played. What a great game he's played. He's had about 25 possessions up to this stage of the match. Brereton couldn't pick it up. It's Wallace trying. He's grabbed by the leg, actually. Umpire oh, oh, on the ball. Oh, 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 by the leg. Doesn't matter. It's a free kick to carry. As the ball goes back out there towards that uh, half four line, punched on by Fall. But this time the umpire's found a free kick, and I think it'll go to Swab on the point of the square down there towards the half back line. As we approach, though, just go over the 24 and a half minute mark of this quarter with the Hawthorne 111 points to Eston 27. Free kick taken by Schwab at half back. Dropping short. Danaher sees that happening and takes the mark. He's done a lot of useful work down there this quarter. Seven kicks for the quarter. And Gary Folds has also added a little bit of mobility around the centre line, but they're breaking down at half forward. Now Halloran goes the knock on. Who's there? Kennedy. Shepherded by Mew. Long hand ball. Who to? Wallace. Oh, doesn't get the bounce. Chance for Kink. Wallace again. Caught. Away, Loveridge, out oh. to Mew, Wallace, Wallace at centre wing, short pass, down the throat of Bertie. E.P. Domenico, right half forward flank. And you can see the fire in his eyes from here. Long kick, that should be a mark surely, not yeah. played by the umpire, Clayton gets it out to Hawker, Hawker in turn over to Hurd. Dropping short, Knights had it. Up to Matthews, here's danger for Essendon. Matthews' snapshot is off target though and through for one behind. Yes it is, just about out of bounds. He's kicked uh, six goals, four. Matthews, six, four, 40 points out of Hawthorne's total of 112 at the 26 minute mark. Even though this is a great performance by uh, Hawthorne, Bob, but I think this is one of the worst performances by a grand final side put up by Essendon I've seen for a long, long time. Yes, I can't but agree, Lou, and as I said before, uh, the same people who were critical of North Melbourne's effort last week uh, can have a close look at Essendon today. 
Richmond. Well, we go back a couple of years too. We had a one-sided grand final and Collingwood were on the receiving end and Richmond won by about 80 points. Well, they can't uh, say that Collingwood's the worst after Eston's performance so far. We see Carey juggle the ball to Matthews coming out, gets a hurried kick back there. Judge in the middle of three of them then. But the umpire will pay a mark. It'll go to Walsh down there in the back pocket. 26 and a half minutes gone of this third quarter. Hit a time on, a time on by about a minute and a half. 16, 16, 112. Hawthorne to Western 4, 3, 27. As the ball goes out of bounds on Hawthorne's half four line. Well, it's been into attack for most of the day. You can tell by the scores. I think they've had, what, 32 uh, shots, direct shots at goal to Western four goals, three. The ball back in the play again. Back it goes to Robertson. What a game this guy's played. A long hand pass to uh, Knights. It didn't bounce right, but he won't give it in. It's finally pushed out to Love. It's a bit of luck for you. Hey, with a tuck, straightens up. But <coughs> tucks off balance, and uh, it's through for one point. Just as well, they're not kicking goals all the time because they'd win by about 125 goals, I would say, the way they're controlling the game. Yes, and full marks of their defence. Look at Eden now, knocking away. They've been doing the hard work. Off the ground he goes. Oh, beautiful play over to Matthews. A running shot at goal, but uh, Matthews still couldn't get that one through. He's already kicked uh, up to this stage of the match. Six five. Six goals, five. He's been a match winner down there too, and so has Peter Knights. Well, you could keep on naming Hawthorne players till your nose bled, because that's how many good players they've had. What a great defence they've had, Lou. Marvellous. Kennedy, Ayres, Robertson, and not forgetting Ede and Mew. McCarthy. McCarthy. You can keep on going as the ball has finally kicked back there. There's the man I was talking about, Mew. Another one. As Robertson balks, then he decides to go for a hand first to pass to Russell Green. He's covered, but he won't give in. Look at him crawling after the ball. Knocked out for Robertson. They're playing desperate football. Back it goes now to uh, Foles. Kicked the short by Ezard over the big fella Merritt. It gets the hoot from the crowd. It's finally picked up by Williams. Over to Hawker. He's hardly been sighted. He's lost that one now. It goes back to McCarthy, goes for hand pass, it slipped out that time to Tuck, so luck's a fortune for them, they can't do the wrong thing at the moment, and there's Rodney Ede taking a mark out there on the centre wing position. Who will steady things down, He tries to play on, can't get around an eagle though. Kink. Hasn't done too much today, and it will be a ball up on centre wing. Well, I'm just trying to their eyes there a little bit, I thought. Ball up on centre wing at the 29 minute mark. Knocked down by Merrick and Eagle as the siren goes to the end of the third quarter. The Chessenden were held goalless. They only kicked, as uh, he's looking at the stats, two behinds. Hawthorne 16 18, 1 1 4, to Essendon 4 3 27. <laughs> tradition. Here comes pride. Here comes the spirit to go for the greatness. It's been bred in them to give it their best, to carry the colors and do nothing less than go for the greatness. Go for the greatness. They're part of the that they got the pride to go for the greatness. Take the best that nature has to offer. Add the secrets of a centuries-old tradition. Never stop learning, and it shows in everything you do. Like it shows in every beer we brew. Go for the greatness. Carlton, throughout Australia, one of the world's great brewers. Boy, oh boy. Makes you wonder. Sure does. Where did they get the money for that? Mercantile credits. Oh. Where did they get the money for that? Mercantile credits. Where did they get the money for that? Mercantile credits. And that. And that. And that. And that. Where did they get the money for that? Aha. Uh -huh. Mercantile credits. You call us. Monday night in Cop Shop. Danny tries to cover for Amanda, but Jeff has had enough and forces a confrontation. An ultimatum is issued, and Amanda is faced with a decision about her career. Cop Shop, Monday, 8.30. Coming soon, the story of a town, a river, the riverboat men, and a young girl who conquers them all in Nancy Cato's classic, All the Rivers Run. Philadelphia Gordon lost everything in the infamous bank crash, so she buys herself the pride of the river, 
She ventures hundreds of miles up the River Murray into the Queensland outback. We have the stomach to use it. Push it up! And still brings the cargo through. She asks for no quarters in the tough male-only world of the river traders. You see, now you're on his land. And wins for herself the greatest prize of all. Woman to be married to this man. Sigrid Thornton and John Waters star in All the Rivers Run. Be with Seven for the world television premiere. Brought to you by Kraft and AGC. Sixteen, eighteen, one, one, four, two, four, three, twenty-seven. That's how they stand at three-quarter time. The major goal kickers for Hawthorne Matthews has six, Burn two, Green two, for Essendon Danaher has two goals. As we go down to the boundary line, and Stephen Phillips has some information for us. Thank you, Peter. A couple of uh, tales of extreme courage here at the MCG today. Tim Watson played for most of the first half with concussion. Hardly knows where he is. Is very groggy indeed. And Terry Wallace of Hawthorne is playing in the Hawthorne bench so he can barely see out of one eye after getting that knock down in the forward pocket and is just struggling along. Gary Bacanara was taken to Vimy House Hospital and will have surgery on that left knee to repair a broken tendon. And... Uh, Stephen Carey, the defender who went off, is also carrying a rather nasty shoulder injury. Back to you. So, uh, a few heavy ones in grand final day. And if uh, Gary Bacanara is watching out at uh, the hospital in Kew, I'm sure he'll be pretty happy with the scoreboard. At the end of the game, we'll be making the votes, or the votes will be cast, I should say, for the best on the ground in the grand final. The medal presentation will be made, uh, the Norm Smith medal presentation made after the presentation of the cup. Here's what the medal's all about. It seemed fitting that the VFL should name the award as best on the ground in the grand final after Norm Smith, because no man in recent years dominated a sporting event like Melbourne's fiery red-haired coach. He took the Melbourne club from obscurity in the early 50s and coached them into a champion side that played in every grand final from 1954 through to 1960, winning five flags along the way. The former champion player represented his beloved demons in six grand finals and was coach in eight for a total of ten premierships. The Norm Smith Medal is steeped in prestige and today will be awarded to the outstanding player on the ground. So the Norm Smith Medal to be awarded after the match. Let's get some comments on the game as it stands though at three-quarter time from Triple Brandlow, medal winner Bob Skilton. Well, since quarter time, Pete, uh, Hawthorne have kicked 11 goals, 12 to 1 goal, 3. And that one goal of Essendon since quarter time was kicked five minutes into the term so it's almost two quarters since Essendon have kicked a goal and let's face it uh, they've only had seven scoring shots for the day anyway. Bob I'll make this prediction now and I don't think I'll be wrong I'll bet that uh, it's a Hawthorne player that wins the Norm Smith medal for the uh, grand final of 1983 because there's about seven or eight in the running for it I would say. For a moment there I thought you were going to predict that Hawthorne <laughs> would be premiers. <laughs> but, but I uh, would say they'd have to put Matthews with six goals in you'd have to put Wallace doing very well in the centre and of course not forgetting Rodney Ead uh, Robertson and Kennedy, and you've got to say to yourself, as far you as I mentioned, Tuck, you didn't and, uh, mention McCarthy. Oh, no, I, uh, I didn't mention O'Halloran, well, I didn't swab mention on you. The wing. And uh, Peter Knights. Yeah, you know, really, you, you can. Uh, there are obviously a few Essendon supporters, I'd say, and uh, there isn't any doubt at all. But uh, it certainly has been a fine performance by the Hawks, and. Uh, OK, we're just about set for the final quarter now. 16-18 to 4-3. Hawks are off the ground, Pete, so... And, uh, you know, Essendon have really got nothing much out of their stars today. The prolific kick-getters that they look for to give them so much, like Watson and uh, Hooker, just have not been there. This is the quarter that counts. It's the start of the final quarter of the 83 Grand Final from the Melbourne Cricket Ground and the crowd in excess of 110,000 as umpire Kevin Smith comes in to bounce the ball. Hawthorne leading 114 to 27. Can they go on with it? Picked up by Carey, well smothered and taken by Tuck. Tuck up the half forward. Walsh is there and takes a strong mark. Walsh in front of DP Domenico. Now he has to play on. He's just about caught by Matthews. Good smother by Brereton. Back to DP Domenico. In towards full forward. No mark played to weed. He got off the ground pretty high. Knights in the forward pocket. Tries to gather it in. Unsuccessful. And the boundary throw-in will take place in Hawthorne's right forward pocket. Hawthorne this quarter kicking to the main scoreboard into the ground. At 87 points in front, Peter. It's a rather useful lead going into winning grand final, isn't it? Knocked down by Madden. He's done well in the ruck today. Picked up by Wallace. And Wallace uh, in a little bit of pain. 
with the right foot. Now it comes to Danaher, who decides to play on. Danaher out towards centre wing, looking for Folds. Probably been Essendon's two best players. Folds on centre wing. 19 kicks to Folds. Merritt and McCarthy. Clayton doesn't get the favourable bounce. It comes to Gary Ayres to judge who had his number taken earlier in the game. Judge up towards full forward. Matthews having a wrestling match with an opponent down there and the ball out of bounds. It will be thrown in left forward pocket for Hawthorne. And Wallace back and running again. He's got a rather heavy right eye, I think it is. He got a solid knock in the third quarter. Knocked down by Walsh. Taken by Clayton. In front is uh, Schwab, but it's picked up by Fold, showing the better judgment. Kennedy and Kink. And Kennedy, nudged into it by Kink, takes the mark. Gets it over to Russell Green, who kicked two beautiful goals earlier. Green a short pass out towards centre wing. Good tackle out there on Copping. After the pass came from Schwab, and it will be a ball up on centre wing. Uh, uh, hand pass, that's straight to Copping. <laughs> didn't give him much of a chance. The other, his teammate, as the ball is knocked down now to Payton. Boots the ball over the half-forward line. Matthews in front, couldn't hold the mark, but he's first to recover. In a bit of trouble there as Neagle goes on top of him there, and the umpire will ball it up about 40 metres out uh, from the Hawthorne goal. At the moment, two and a half minutes gone of this last uh, quarter of the 1983 Grand Final, and the Hawks are in front by 87 points. Brodin got the punch on back to Matthews. He goes down, there's four of them pouncing on him there. He's got no chance of getting out. And the umpire will ball it up. This time it's about 25 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. They're 16, 18, 114 to Eston, 4, 3, 27. That's one of the worst performances I've seen a side put up in a grand final by Eston, but a brilliant performance by Hawthorne. Knocked out by Knights. Picked up by Williams. The ball kicked uh, no distance at all. It's uh, Walsh going the big punch down there towards the forward pocket. And the ball is out of bounds again. So it's right against the point post, deep in the... Uh, Attacking zone for uh, Hawthorne. Brereton grabs that one. Still nowhere to go, and the umpire will ball it up once again. Hardly a brilliant start to the last quarter, is it? Well, I think uh, possibly the uh, Bombers are pretty disputed at the moment with their pathetic performance, and uh, Hawthorne just going through the most because they know they've got this game tied up for the 1983 Grand Final. And breaking clear is Bradbury. Started off all right, but like his teammates, he's really faded out of the game. Chance from you. Haven't seen Vanderhaar. Now we see Vanderhaar get a hand pass from Kink. Goes for a short pass. It'll be okay. Oh, Merritt dropped it. He's grabbed by Green, and Green goes over the top of him. So they can't do a thing right as Robertson spins out of the pack. Back it goes to Ayres. Punches the ball there to Rodney Ead. Has a bit of trouble picking it up. He got one on the back of the head from uh, Merritt. Oh, it might have been on the forehead. Well, he got one in any case. Finally kicked out wide. A chance here now from you to mark. Even though he's upended by uh, by Clayton, I suppose they've got to do something to put on a show, uh, Essendon. They certainly haven't played any football here today that would encourage their supporters. In front of Simon Madden. As a matter of fact, Bob, he's tried pretty hard all day. He's done really well on the right. the wrong hand pass. And there we see Ludbridge firing the goals. And I think he's put it through. He has. Yes, the goals. That's something up to me for Essendon. Yeah, well, I can't. He's probably their best player, and uh, there he goes for a hand pass to the wrong man, and they score a goal. So that's time to turn it up, I'd reckon, Bob. We watch a game on replay now, and I certainly hope Richard Lovewich does say thank you to Simon Madden. Because it was a lovely hand pass from a Richard Lovewich point of view. We watch from the other angle now, and that's really rubbing salt into the wound. Five minutes have got in the final quarter of this one-sided grand final. Hawthorne going right on with the job, and they should be able to record their fifth grand final win. They won it last in 1978, but of course Essendon haven't won it since 1965. They were in the grand final in 68, but they were beaten on that occasion by three points. Kennedy on centre wing, in mind for the Norm Smith medal. The pass is to Knights, who can't take the mark. Weston gets it to Neagle. Walsh at right half-back flank. Clayton does the shepherding. Walsh's kick is long, looking for Copping, who should be able to take the mark. He does in front of David O'Halloran. And Gary Ayres down for Hawthorne. They're going down to the great rate of knots here at the moment. Steve Copping is at right half forward flank. Well, wobbles the punt kick. Straight into the arms of Colin Robertson, who gets one for his corner. Oh, golly, he'll give uh, 
Kennedy a great run for this Norm Smith medal too. Bob, he's played a fine game too. Yes, they look very similar, Lou, and uh, both players can certainly be proud of their games. Yes, they can. And Dana just about getting into the back of Brereton, who has the mark anyway, I would have thought. Five marks to Brereton, and he too is limping. Well, Hawthorne are going to win this, but I'll finish with a lot of sore players. Passes to Green, who could score from there. He's a long kick, Green. Gives it a chance. Off target, though, and through for one point. So Hawthorne advancing their total by that margin to 121 points, 17-19 to 4-3 at the MCG. 94 points the difference. Danaher boots the ball long out towards the wing position. The chance for Little Lazard, punched away by Tuck. Going after his fouls, gives a hand pass back out there to Clayton at half-back. His kick is a high one out there and a chance now for a mark. It is a mark to Carey. Carey playing down there in attack. Di Pietomenico uh, couldn't grab that one. It's finally picked up by Robertson again, doing a bit of fancy footwork there. Straight after him is Vanderhaar. The ball tapped back by Robertson. In goes Baharjo. Upended that time was Robertson, but the umpire said he was tripped. My golly, they've had some pretty quick players here today, Essendon. Vanderhaar's hardly been sighted. Watson had to leave the ground. And, of course, Rene Kink has been hopeless out there at half-forward. Gary Ayres has gone to full forward for Hawthorne. Well, it wouldn't matter where he went to. Oh, we see uh, Di Pieta Menega go in there to uh, Green, but he's uh, not Green Wooded as he shrugs him off, gets a short kick back out there, and it's McCarthy sidestepping them. A hand pass back to Tuck, but they're under no pressure at all at the moment. Back it goes out there, and there's a fine mark to, uh, to Danaher. Danaher's kick is across the centre-half forward. And uh, we see Vanderhaar tap the ball out of care, uh, Wood. A hand pass coming round, punched on by Di Pietomenico. It's going for the boundary line, and Little Lazard can't get there in time, and it's out of bounds. Just on the eight-minute mark of this uh, last quarter of the 1983 Grand Final, and I would say it's all over by the shouting. That would be the understatement of the year. I'll go along with that, Lee. <laughs> Knocked out by McCarthy. Smother up that kick. We see Williams trying to get clear. Finally, Tuck coming out. A hand pass over to Mew. But they're just doing it easy, doing it as they like. A long hand pass to Pate. He's got plenty of time to go back and get this one. Give one back to Kennedy. He gets around Bradbury very easy. Another long hand pass coming to Loveridge. Grabbed a bit high, but the umpire says play on as he gives a wrong hand pass to Rene Kegg. He actually threw that uh, to Bradbury. Bradbury runs to the half forward line now. He's got a chance to lob this well up into the goal square. Vanderhaar at the back, but he's not good enough. And a good mark there by Russell Green. Green out marking his taller opponent, gives it over to Robertson. Well, Robertson and Kennedy, we've said many times, look uh, very much alike at a distance and they've played superb games today. O'Halloran to Wallace. We could almost say they'll take votes off each other for the Norm Smith medal. Green, Gary Ayres coming off the ground for Burn, it looks like. On to Brereton, who's collared and drops the ball. The call from the umpire is play on, nevertheless. It's spooned out to Danaher, who's caught well by Judge. Ezard has it. Back towards centre field. Tuck will take the mark. Yes, he does. Yes, and they're not even looking where they're kicking now as Gary Ayres goes around the boundary line. And then Michael Byrne coming back onto the ground. But Essendon not even looking where they're kicking the ball. Tuck's kick up towards full forward. Knights is there. Gets out positioned. It comes to Shane Hurd. Trying to find Bradbury. Wallace is there. He's really one-eyed at the moment, but he still picks it up OK and fires at the goal, but it's off target. And it will be... He'll get a choice of another kick or taking the point. This happened earlier, didn't it? When uh, Wallace was decked, hence his crook eye. I don't know whether we can get a real close close-up of that. Oh, he's turning his back to the chem now. Uh, you'll see the eye I'm talking about. There's quite a mouse underneath it. And Kevin Sheedy, naturally a very concerned coach. <laughs> Terry Wallace, 35 metres out, has kicked one goal. 20 kicks to Wallace with that one off target and again through for one behind. So that registers a point. 17 21, 22 to 4 3, 27. Essendon have still only scored two behinds after quarter time, and that's amazing in a grand final by any side. Madden trying hard, outmarks his own opponent, es uh, Williams. Who's he playing it to? He's given it to Little Williams, who plays on. Williams from half back. Knocked away from copping by Robertson. It comes to Loveridge. He's got a choice of three players. He chooses McCarthy. McCarthy to Eid. Eid from centre field up towards half forward. No one's within 20 metres of Michael Tuck and he takes the mark. We see Tuck out there at half forward about 65 metres out from goal. Lee Matthews has kicked six so far in the game. 
It's a long kick by Tuck. Doesn't make the distance. Vernon Front's got the mark. Just coming on the ground, replacing Ayers. And, of course, that's how things are going for Hawthorne at the moment. An example, as we watch Vern on replay take the mark, of just how demoralised Essendon are. Terry Danaher, then, was trying to cover both Judge and his own opponent, Brereton, uh, thinking that they were going to have the ball kicked to them. And uh, Danaher trying to do everything down there. Byrne going for goal number three. And he's put it through for a goal. The America's Cup. The Decider. Live from Newport, Rhode Island. 1 a.m. Sunday on 7. 2.45 Sunday, 7 Sport takes you live to Football Park in Adelaide for the South Australian National Football League's preliminary final when the Sturt Double Blues face up to a determined Norwood side. The South Australian preliminary final, exclusive to 7 Sport. Just on the 12-minute mark, and we're back in the centre. And, of course, the difference now... 101 points, Luke. 101 points. If that's not a winning margin, I'll give the game away. Waiting for the centre bounce again. It's Madden against Pate. Madden got it out again, but he knocks it to deep here to Menigo, and they go back into attack again. A chance for Matthews at the back here, but knocked away by Hurd. Going after his burn. Vanderhaar playing down there at the full-back position, so they've changed their players all over the place, and the ball is finally uh, a free kick giving to, uh, given to Vanderhaar. Payton in front, tapped that one down. Bahajar pounces on the ball, a hand pass coming over there to Wood. He runs right into trouble. Actually pushed uh, O'Halloran in the face that time. But here comes Green out of the pack with another hand pass over to DP Adamenico on the boundary line. Oh, he's well collared, but he recovers OK, goes for a little hand pass. He comes out with the ball, but it's the wrong man. Wood can't get clear. They uh, pounce on him. That's how ferociously they're playing at the moment. And the umpire said, what will it be? It'll be a ball up on that centre wing position. Just on the 13-minute mark. Still 101 points the difference. Brereton tries to get through the pack. Finally, it's tapped on, but picked up again by a little Lovebridge. The ball kicked back towards that half-forward line for Hawthorne. And there's a good mark to Danaher. Well, Danaher's tried his hardest since we, since shifted back to uh, centre-half back. Ball across there towards centre field. Tapped on again that time by Fowles. There's a go for Matten to pick it up. And a chance for, oh, he's too slow as the hand pass comes back to Rene Kink. There's three of them there against him. Swab pounces on the ball. And the umpire still calling play on as we see Copping go down. Back it goes to Madden. He taps the ball out wide. Coming after the swab. He copped one that time from Carey. Over to Wood. Now it's Rene Kink's uh, chance to score. But uh, luck not going the bomber's way. And it's through for one point. And the crowd cheer. And listen, they've scored. They've scored at last. And that's the first time I've heard that on the MCG for a long time in a grand final. 18 goals, 20, 128. North order, Western, four goals, four. 28 points. And, of course, it's been a shocking performance put up by Essendon, but we can't distract the performance put up by Hawthorne at the moment, Peter. I think it's desire for the ball, isn't it? And Hawthorne, after the first quarter, in fact, in that as well, have desired the ball more than Essendon. Peyton and Madden. Madden has tried hard. I'll give him that. He would be, uh, with uh, Terry Danaher, their best player, in my opinion. Out it goes to Rodney Ede. Loveridge. Looking for a 15-metre penalty, but the umpire just whistles time on and doesn't give one. Loveridge is at right half-back flank for Hawthorne. Has roved very well. He's gone for a short pass. Hawthorne players lose everywhere. Ede at right centre wing. Long kick by the Hawthorne flanker. Looking for Brereton or Knights, and a good mark. Just thinking about the record number of goals in a grand final, I think it is seven. Lee Matthews has kicked six. So there may be some interest in that uh, regard. Knights hooks it across to half forward. Danaher has the chance to mark it and does. To centre wing, trying to find Copping. Pursued by Green. Borks the Hawthorne player, runs on. Short pass. McCarthy can't take it. Now this surely should be an Essendon score. Madden. Two bad hand passes by Madden in this quarter. The other one resulted in a goal. That should have resulted in a goal, but didn't. <laughs> I don't think you need to say anything at all. Every pitcher tells a story, and you feel sorry for Simon Madden on that occasion. Apart from that, he has been a very good player, Bob. He hasn't stopped trying right throughout. He's controlled the actual ruck work, and it's just a shame that uh, Simon has to do that. Pete, it's the old saying, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. Yeah, very true it is, Lee. Up to half forward for Hawthorne. Danaher again. And he has played a good mark. 
a good game that was almost a mark. Heard. Clayton. Clayton at half back. Long handball in towards centre field. Merritt to Folds. Folds from half forward. This is looking better for Essendon. Bahaja now could score from there. A shot at goal. In the goal square as well. He's made enough of it and through for one behind. So they don't look like scoring a goal the way they're going at the moment. No luck going for the Bombers. McCarthy will bring the ball back into play. He kicks it clear of hand and foot as the rule stipulates and could get himself into trouble, but he gets out of it. McCarthy to half back in front as folds and the mark taken by little Bahaja who plays on. Quickly playing on, having a running shot at goal. This could be okay. This might now is a chance for Madden. He's got it. Now the burning quest is really hand pass to the wrong man. No. I don't think he will. He's only about two metres out from goal and of course it's been a long time between drinks as far as goals are concerned. It, uh, I think the last goal they kicked was at the five minute mark of the second quarter. So we're just on the 17 minute mark of this last quarter of the grand final. And uh, the result is a goal. And all those Eston fans have come to life, but not with a big roar. The score is 18 goals, 20, 128 Est uh, Hawthorne. To Essendon, five goals, 6.36. And 38 scoring shots to, to 11. And that, uh, well, what more need you say? No matter where you look on the ground, I believe that uh, Kennedy and, as we watch on the replay, Bahaja putting the ball into the goal square, Simon Madden taking the mark. And, uh, well, Madden couldn't at least hold his head high, but uh, the whole Hawthorne side have taken part in this, well, demoralising defeat. Seven and a half minutes gone. Centre bounce again. But there's no doubt it's Hawthorne for the 1983 uh, Premiership as the ball comes down to DPN in Manico. A short kick. Back it goes to Judge. He taps the ball on. Going after it now is Neagle. Collared that time by Brodham. It still gets a hand pass out to Bradbury. Bradbury goes for a bit of a run out there on that centre wing position. He'll kick the ball well over the half forward line. Madden again has got another mark. A chance for their second goal for the quarter. As a matter of fact, this is his seventh mark for the match. And as Bob said before, he's been a real trier. But he has had very little assistance from his teammates. He could count their best players easily on one hand. We see there's 110,000 odd people here today. As the ball is shot at the goal, but Madden's off target this time for another point. And we see Hawthorne still 18 goals, 20-128. To Eston, five goals, 7.37. And, of course, it's been a great uh, show put on here by Hawthorne, but a pathetic one by the Bombers. One of the worst we've seen for many, many years. There's a chance for DP Domenico to take the mark. Mark and a free kick out there on that half-back line as we approach the 19-minute mark of this, the last quarter of the 1983 Grand Final. Up towards centre wing. Hawthorne mark. Game. Yes. What a great game. Gives it over to Judge. In towards Payton. Onto Eid. Eid steady. He's got a beautiful smother down there by Merritt. A chance for Bahaja. Knights can't catch him. Bahaja, short pass. Walsh on the forward line. Takes the mark and plays on. Muse just about got him. Now he has it. Walsh Let's kicks go! and scores a goal. That's more like the Essendon than we expected. Walsh puts it through for his first goal and the score, 6 7 43 to 18 20, 128. Yes, I do believe, though, Pete, for the first time in the game, that Hawthorne in the last five minutes have certainly relaxed. And uh, I know it's easy to say that you shouldn't do it, but uh, when you're that far in front, it is a natural tendency, and they certainly have uh, relaxed. And that, uh, I'm not trying to say Essendon wouldn't have scored, but uh, it certainly wouldn't have helped. We're at the 20 minute mark now. The official attendance 110,332 watching the game today. We hope you've enjoyed it and, in fact, are still enjoying it up towards half forward for Hawthorne, knocked away by Weston. The chances for Williams to pick the ball up, which he does. Essendon finding, uh, can I say, their second win, but did they have a first? And a good mark to copy. Well, why weren't Essendon doing this all day? Well, because I think what Bobby Skilton said before, they've eased up a bit when you've got a lead of 100 points just uh, about and uh, of course it's a natural attitude to take and uh, it's too late now the horses bowl it's no good closing the gate now Peter copping from 20 meters out has put through a goal that's Steve Coppins first 
and Essendon 7 7 7 49 to 18 20 128 yeah, it's a nice mark by uh, Copping and good play by Darren Williams. If you watch on replay, Williams from the centre circle puts the long kick down and the long arms of Stephen Copping eye on the ball and a fine mark. Alan Jeans will have the coaches runner out very soon. I think what Alan Jeans will be doing coming down to the bench to celebrate with the boys for sure pretty soon. 21 minutes gone, 128 to 49. Thumped into Westman's attacking zone, not for very long though. Here's the runner, Robertson. Almost throws that one out in front of him for Terry Wallace to pick up, which Wallace does at right half forward. And it's up there towards the forward pocket, coming out as little Loveridge. So he's got the mark about 25 metres out from goal. Jeans on the phone, don't tell me he's worried at this stage of the match. We see uh, goal put through this time by O'Halloran. Well, he's flat. Came right down from that back line to get that unless he's playing down there on the forward line. Bob, I'm not sure. So it's 19 goals, 20, 134. Hawthorne to Western, seven goals, 7.49. Jeans on the phone. Probably ringing up someone else overseas to tell them they've won the grand final because he wouldn't make, be making any moves now as O'Halloran puts that goal through, gets flattened, but I think he'll be OK. It might be Mick Miller, Alan Jeans' is superior. <laughs> Could be. He's the Heaven Sheedy in the Essendon camp, the chairman of selectors, Brian Donahue. Well, you wouldn't want to be the comedian at the celebrations uh, for Hawth <laughs> uh, Essendon tonight. Centre bounce again. Gary is new, just about to come back on to it, would appear. Well, they've had many fine players, Hawthorne. 22 and a half minutes gone of this last quarter. Knocked out that time by Merritt. Tuck got a short kick as a scrimmage developing here as it comes out to uh, Big uh, uh, Burn. Burn's kick is a left footer down there over the half four line. And down goes uh, Bradbury, picked up here now by Swab. Finally, it's Deep Pierre Domenico having a shot at goal, but there's Vanderhaar down there at the full-back position to take the mark. Goes for a long kick out wide. Browden off the ground. And, of course, uh, Ayers will take his place. There's a chance now for uh, the ball to be driven across there by Essendon's herd. A good pass to Rene Kink. Another hand pass coming over to Merritt. A long one back here to Wood. But the sting's gone out of the game now as we see a shot at goal by Wood. Not a bad sort of a kick either, it's a goal. So at the 23 and a half minute mark of this last quarter, we see uh, Hawthorne, 19 goals, 20, 134 to Western, 8 goals, 755. And there's no doubt about it, Peter, the 1983 grand final premiership. Well, the flag is in the bag uh, for Hawthorne. It's Essendon's best quarter, isn't it, on the scoreboard? But, of course, as Bob Skelton mentioned, would they be able to do this had Hawthorne not eased up a little bit? They've got their, well, their running game going a little bit, something they never had in the early part. 134 to 55. Knocked down by Merritt this time. It goes to Williams and then loses it. Wallace, a wild hand pass, but the whistle had already gone to indicate another ball up, which will take place just wide of the centre circle. Merritt thumps it well downfield, intercepting as Chris Mew runs into plenty of trouble there. Williams gets clear of Payton, no he doesn't. Good tackle by the Hawthorne Ruckman. It comes to Michael Tuck. Tuck up towards Loveridge. Loveridge leading Bradbury but fumbles. Bradbury has the chance to get it now. On towards Folds, Schwab and Tuck. Tuck on centre wing, very close to the boundary line and has been paid a free kick by the umpire for in the back. Michael Tuck on left centre wing to put Hawthorne back into attack again. And a few fans may have left, but most still here to see the presentation of the Premiership Cup. Tuck's long kick up the half forward. Plenty of Essendon players are there. Merritt's in front, thumped away by Weston, picked up by Bahajar onto Neagle. Neagle looks for Williams and finds him. Williams running. Folds. Running with him is Clayton. Chips it in, up towards full forward, McCarthy should go the punch, he does. Waiting for it is Carey. Carey could score, long shot by the Essendon defender, into the goal square. Green is content to see it roll through for one behind. And we enter the time on period now of the final term, with Hawthorne going to a very easy win, 134 to 56. Waiting for the ball to come back into play. Rodney Heath goes for a short pass, it's OK, and marked here by Loveridge at set a half back. With plenty of time to... Get rid of this one out wide to Peter Knights. He goes down after getting up very high. The ball pushed over there towards Tuck. 
Tuck hooks the ball back looking for Matthews, who's already kicked six goals. And there's Vanderhaar breaking away from Byrne and boots the ball back there towards the centre wing position. The back is Mew to take a great, a great mark. McGilly, they've had uh, many fine players today, Hawthorne. Their back line has been superb, Bob. They're certainly playing that Hawthorne side, Lee. Uh, <coughs> when you talk about uh, sharing a premiership and uh, Alan Jeans now uh, coaching oh. his second premiership side. A little bit uh, different than the other one, Bob. Yes, it's a bit different the last time he won a premiership by a point against Collingwood, but... Uh, at I'm this very... stage of the game, he's feeling much more relaxed, I'd say. I'd say, but I feel very pleased for Alan Jeans because he's been a great man for football and one of the best coaches in the business. A bit old-fashioned, but it's the old-fashioned way that's coming through at the moment as we see a free kick going against Essen for throwing the ball and it'll go to Wallace at centre field. He'd be a very happy man, Alan Jeans, and he thoroughly deserves this premiership. He's worked very, very hard. And uh, the umpire will pay a free kick here. It'll go to Hawthorne. And it'll go to Russell Green. A quick hand pass coming over to Rodney E. Goes for a short pass. Looking for Judge. And that's a well juggle mark that time by Simon Matt. Jeans again. He's anxious. You can see the gleam in his eye. He knows he's got the grand final tied up now. And that's the second premiership Jeans has won in his very uh, colourful uh, coaching career. Punched away by Wood. Wallace picks it up over to Little Loveridge. A long kick up there towards Burn at full forward. Uh, Van der Haar goes the tap down. A fumble going on by both sides here now. Finally, it's pushed out to Bradbury. He was grabbed. And it's uh, Danaher in that back pocket getting around Tuck but runs into trouble. Finally gets a kick back. And a mark taken out there short of half back by Bradbury. A quick hand pass over to Foles. And the ball out wide now. A chance for Walsh to mark the ball there. He taps the ball away from you. Renee Kinks grab it. Grab and the umpire will ball it up on that centre wing position at the 27 and a half minute mark with Jeans on the fence, rare to go. I don't know if we can get a wide shot of that at all. There's about 15 cameras and pressmen everywhere surrounding Alan Jeans down there. I'll come back to that in a moment. Folds, grabbed by Schwab, holding the ball. And it's Walsh. And what's he doing? And Kevin Walsh uh, telling the umpire what he thinks of the decision. And free kick going to Hawthorne. And the play on call, DP Domenico does a short pass. Payton takes the mark at half forward and plays on. Can Matthews get seven goals? Not this time, it would appear. The umpire has found a free kick. It's going to who? Judge, I think. It's a uh, burn or judge, I would say. Watch it on replay. Knight's getting a, a shove out as Judge comes in now. A little ticky touch wood, yes. but nonetheless, a free kick. And Judge will be attempting to kick his second goal. And the numbers of cameras, the number of cameras around Jeans grows by the second as Judge has a shot at goal and in fact has put it through for his second goal. Two goals to Judge. 2020. 140 points to Essendon 8856. 28 or nearly 29 minutes gone now in the final term. Judge, of course, replaced Gary Bacanara. And if Gary is watching in hospital, he'll be very, very pleased with the score. But that's the battery of cameramen that I mentioned around Alan Jeans, who will be a very, very pleased man. And Pete, that cheer from the crowd there was because uh, I think they are now leading by more than any grand final has been won by. And it may, of course, be the last grand final here at the MCG. What a note to finish it on. Picked up by Williams. Williams, a long shot in towards the goal for Reston. And Matt uh, Merritt is there, takes the mark and plays on. Merritt shoots and has put it through for a goal. I think as he missed it. Hit the post. Yeah. Well, they can't do a thing right, Pete, can they? From uh, a couple of metres out. They certainly cannot. Well, we're at the, or just on the 30 minute mark and the siren due to go. We see uh, Merritt run into this goal now and look to certainty, but he's hit the post. Shaved the pole, not shaved it, fair and square. And of course, uh, the ball back into play again. Out there on that uh, back pocket position. Rodney Ead going after it, and the ball is out of bounds. So at the 30 minute mark, we see the score. There's the siren and the Hawthorne of from 1883. And a fine effort. There's their coach, Alan Jeans. And what a happy man. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. One of the most popular coaches with the media and with everybody concerned with football. The players are just delighted, Peter. And I know that Peter Landy, deep down in his own heart, that's our co commentator here, our host of the show here, has a little feeling towards Hawthorne. And there's must be a lump in your throat, too, Pete. That's some very generous odds from Essendon supporters during the week, too. So it's 6-4, to four, Lou. It's beautiful. Now there's Alan Jeans receiving the 
handshakes and the congratulations from the player, people concerned. Bob, it's a great feeling. And of course, Hawthorne are premiers for 1983. It's just a reward the way they played. Uh, a fine team effort and uh, a superb effort from all and sundry. When you look, Alan Jeans, Alan Jeans, Alan Alan Jeans tears, I think. Peter Knights. So the final scores here. In the 83 grand final, Hawthorne 20 goals, 20 behinds, 140 points to Essendon, 8 9, 57. On the scoreboard, the final term, certainly Essendon's best, they added four goals, six. Hawthorne added in that term four goals, two, so they pegged back four points. With Hawthorne winning the match in the second quarter when they added seven goals, four to one goal, one. Let's go to Stephen Phillips. Thank you, Peter. With me, I've got Lee Matthews. Lee, what's the feeling like? Well, it's funny, you know, I hate to be cocky, but winning by that much sometimes spoils it, you know, I, because, you know, you know it's coming and that, you know, you're sort of getting used to it the whole quarter, but our fellas today, they put their heart and soul into the game and just ran the fellas off their feet and, you know, I was just proud to lead them. The fourth on the side obviously was steel for this game and yet it didn't really eventuate into the hard clash that it might have been. I never expected it to be any sign of blood, Buzz. I mean, it was a, it's going to be a tough match. Yes, and we're a good, tough side. Today, just we played so much better. We played pretty much as our peak, and if you do that, well, we'd always be hopeful that we can win a premiership. But it's such a, you know, there's so many things can go wrong. It's just fantastic to actually be there. Congratulations, captain of the premiership side for Thanks, the first Stephen. time, Lee Matthews. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Stephen. And Stephen Phillips getting the first interview with the victorious Hawthorne captain, Lee Matthews. Well done, Steve. Steve. There's the Essendon, Essendon side, but let's get into Ron Casey. Victorian Football League thanks you all for your involvement in this great day for Australian football. The first presentation is to the winner of the Norm Smith Medal. And to announce the name of the winner, the president of the Victorian Football League, Dr. Alan Allen. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Colin Robertson of Hawthorne wins the Norm Smith Medal. And to make the presentation, Kevin Bartlett. Congratulations to Hawthorne to make the presentation to the Champion Club of 1983. I introduce to you His Excellency, the Governor of Victoria, the patron of the Victorian Football League, Rear Admiral Sir Brian Murray. of the Premiership Cup and the commemorative medals. Before I do so, I would like on your behalf to thank Dr. Alan Aylett, President. Thank you, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like you to acknowledge the performance of the champion team of 1983 as we introduce to each, each player to receive his medallion. Number one, Ken Judge.
Number seven, Gary Ayres. Number eight, David O'Halloran. Number nine, Robert Diapier Domenico. Your Excellency, number 11, Gary Bacanara, is not here, but you may congratulate him because he's watching in Kew Hospital at this moment, and we all wish him well from the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Number 12, Ian Payton. Number 16, Terry Wallace. Number 17, Michael Tuck. Number 20, Michael McCarthy. Number 21, Michael Byrne. Number 22, Richard Loveridge. Number 23, Dermot Browden. Number 24, Peter Knights. Number 26, Rodney E. Number 29, Russell Green. Number 30, Peter Schwab. Number 32, Colin Robertson. Number 34, John Kennedy. Number 46, Chris Mew. Your Excellency, before we make the final two presentations, I think the Channel 7 is going to take us right now to the Cure Hospital and Gary Baganara. Well, thanks, Peter. Yes, I have a very groggy, but nonetheless very pleased Gary Baganara with me. Uh, Gary, you must be obviously very pleased, but disappointed at the same time. Yes, very uh, pleased for the club and pleased for the boys. And, uh, you know, it's well deserved to Alan and the fellas. Great, but uh, obviously I'm a little bit disappointed about being here. Well, you were on the field, what, less than five minutes. What exactly happened? Um, well, I went for the ball and uh, I'm not sure what happened. Now I pivoted on my, on my leg and uh, I thought I dislocated my knee, but what had happened is uh, the tendon had uh, snapped in my knee. And you'll be undergoing surgery this evening? Yes, yeah. You must be disappointed that you won't be able to join in the celebrations with the fellas. Yes, that's all a part of a grand final win and uh, you know, I wish I was there now with them and uh, no, well, you know, that's football unfortunately. Well I'm sure they'll be paying you visits tomorrow morning. Yeah.
OK, well, thanks, Gary. And uh, now it's back to you, Peter, at the MCG. Big cheer for Lee Matthews. And Alan Jeans. The final presentation, the medallion and the Premiership Cup for 1983 to the captain of the Hawthorne Football Club, Lee Matthews. Celebrations have already started, it would appear, as Alan Jeans was being cheered around the ground on the victory lap, being cheered there by David Polkinghorne, who was named in the side but didn't take his place on the field, and also Michael Byrne. But it's a team effort, and that's what Alan Jeans, I think, would stress. Great performance put up here by Hall for today, but uh, the Bombers very disappointed, but you can't take anything away from Hawthorne. They've been a top side all this year, not the fanciest team in the world, but by golly, what a side they are. They certainly play well together. Full marks of their coach, their marvellous captain, Lee Matthews, and the entire side. And special mention to Peter Knights and uh, Tuck, Michael Tuck. They're the veterans of the side, but they still played marvellously well today, like the rest of the side. There's the losers, and there's always going to be a loser. A disappointing incident, but still, that's the way it goes. Yes, for Essendon, we could probably say Simon Madden, Terry, Gary Folds, Terry Danaher, Merv Nagel were the only players to really give a yelp today and uh, it's a magnificent win to the Hawthorne side uh, in any premiership there can only be one winner and they certainly were a winner today. I don't think uh, the uh, critics uh, or the judges or the good judges thought the margin would be so great they thought it would be uh, a blood and guts job but it didn't turn out that way after the first quarter it was a one horse race and uh, Hawthorne never looked like losing it. As a matter of fact, I think uh, Eston kicked their first goal uh, in the 17-minute mark of the uh, last quarter, and the one before that was at the five-minute mark of the second quarter. Players, well, as I said, already starting the celebrations. The Premiership Cup being put to a good use rather than the position that will occupy on the mantelpiece for, uh, well, whenever. Peter, will you be at the celebrations tonight? No, I've got to work, Lou, but... Uh, I think you'll, you'll call around I'll later on. Probably call around. Well, it's a great performance, Bob and Peter, by Alan Jeans. He's not the modern coach, as they talk about, with statistics and all that. He's the basic coach, but a fantastic effort by Hawthorne and their coach, Alan Jeans. Yes, we'll echo those sentiments, and I'd like to thank you for uh, your call today, Lou, and our comments from Bob Skilton and their efforts of Stephen Phillips and Max Stevens, our director, Ralph Potter, and the broadcast unit of The Seven Network. We hope you've enjoyed the telecast wherever you've been watching. I'm Peter Vandy, signing off from Grand Final Day, 1983. Striving. Teamwork is the thing that draws